Now let's get lively. Gather round, gather round, let's sort the fires from the spires, the needy from the greedy, and those who trust me from those who don't. Eddie Murphy! Fuck you! Get the fuck out of here! Man, you fight with nobody. Best of all time, and before time was even created. Ah! Ladies and gentlewomen, it is indeed time for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching across the world. This is the Eggplant Tornado podcast, the fight podcast for the common man, soaring up the charts upon the wings of the mighty buffalo. The mightiest. We're coming at you live from Garden Disaster Studios. I'm one of your hosts, Nettie, and with me as always is the man, the myth, the legend, the griff. How are you doing this week, my friend? Oh man, like, I can't oh, really- Oh god damn! Them boys be bright, shining lights. God damn it. God damn it. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, that was Podge. Wherever he is, I don't know. Um, what the fuck was that? I have no idea. Um, maybe he just like willed the voice message that hard it uh, made it into the recording. Essentially, he's just like, fuck you, Zuck. It's getting it's, through it's happening one um, way or the other he's, com- he's hacked the system i'm doing good i'm doing good busy weekend for the lads busy weekend for the lads but a huge fun. one huge um one. yeah super excited for this episode super fucking excited and sitting across from me at the end of the table here is a being made of pure logic the prediction wizard himself through me how you doing buddy not bad mate how are you yeah i'm not bad man not bad Griff? at all top tier top, top tier. tier i like it but yeah what a weekend we had uh speaking of Shit. which Two YouTube exclusive videos went up on the weekend. They did. They did. They uh, did. Fight Companion. Um, just yeah, only the three main fights, but we all got in early and got it done. Uh, the Froom had some shit to do. Other than that, so then we got our homie Mont in to do like the Sunday roast edition of the uh, Veggie Bake. So yeah, it was good fun. That's it. No particular topic. And as always, you can find us on all these streaming platforms: Apple, Spotify. We're on the TikTok and Instagram at Eggplant Tornado Podcast, and search Eggplant Tornado Podcast on Facebook. Griff, what do we got in store for the people today? Like usual, you know, a fucking staple, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> just like, you know, we went a bit over the top last week with the old believe it or not. Hour 20, I believe. I, um, mean, I can't say it's not going to get that long this week. but Oh, there's there's no guarantees here. Uh, we're going to roll over. Right believe it or not goes, mate. That's oh, it. Best believe it. You never know what's <laughs> going to pop up. No, you don't. Uh, we're going to roll from that into a little UFC... 280 breakdown uh just the three main fights that we already kind of covered give our thoughts on what happened our thoughts on where that could lead um and then we're going to do some breakdowns of the the weekend coming we've got loma versus ortiz that's just a fucking fun fight for everyone uh we've got jake paul versus anderson silver um i mean bring it home anderson come on but yeah wind that clock back wind it wind it back son wind it back we've got um the Katie Taylor versus Carabajal, Carabajal. I don't know how to fucking say it. I'll go with Carabajal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, then we've got Jojo Diaz versus Sabita. William Zapeda, I believe. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to go into the, everybody's favorite segment, which is, you know, another staple. So, yeah, we've got, we've got a bit to talk about, and... We're, we're beyond ready. We are. So let's kick it off here. Uh, Shields vs. Marshall rematch. Are, uh, Shields vs. Marshall rematch talks are already in the works. What do you guys think about that? I did see the. That's already in the works. Yeah, fuck. Let them fight again. That'd be dope. I'll yeah. watch it. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're looking at the US this time. Uh, you would hope so, yeah. That'd be fair, I think. Yeah, considering Shields, you know, went to Marshall's fucking backyard and got the job done. Yeah, yeah it was. Awesome. A- it was a good fight. I mean, do you see the fight going any differently a second time? No, I see it pretty much going the same way. Um, Not really. But, fuck, I'd watch it every second weekend if they decided to have that fight. Yeah, that's it, It was action-packed. So, yeah. like, was if Marshall can start faster, that yeah, that's makes it, like, it, it makes it more interesting. I think she sort of waited, like, she was sort of seeing what Shields was doing, and Shields was just on from the first moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah 100%. Like, but she come home strong. Marshall, yeah, yeah. In well, the actually, in the later yeah. round, she was coming home well, and then I think Shields probably took the later one. Reading the last the article, round, 
I believe that they're also actually trying to vie for a 12 round fight. Yeah, that'd be huge. Fucking, yeah, just let all the ladies fight 12 rounds. Like, keep, yeah. them, keep them two minutes all you want, but fuck yeah, add a, add a couple extra rounds. That's sure. at least at least another two rounds kind of thing. If you're going to yeah, give them sure. anything. Like, for the, for the belts and all that shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. Right. Even, even then, you're only fighting 24 minutes. So exactly. You're, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you're still... It's still going to be action-packed. So. Like, and then you ask most women, I'm sure they want to fight three-minute rounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the rest, like the men do. So. That's it. They want the yeah. same recognition. Well, it's least, they train the, the same and all that shit. So fuck. Yeah, why at least not, give like, them the twelve the rounds, even if it's two. Yeah, I mean they put minutes. on two of the most action-packed fights that we've seen this year so far. So hundred percent. Yeah, and, and look, like, we're probably fucking in for another one this weekend exactly, with yeah. Taylor fighting. So, uh, alrighty, DAZN branded an embarrassment for broadcasting YouTuber and OnlyFans fights. I don't disagree. Yeah, that's I, it. I can't really. I mean, they're going to get broadcasted regardless, so, like, Make there's money money. there to just be taken, you know what I mean? So, why yeah. not take it? Like, yeah. it's just going to get broadcasted to fucking other shit. Exactly. Like People will literally just broadcast it to YouTube, and, like, people will still have to pay for it there to yeah. watch it. Like, it's not, I don't know, or another promoter's going to pick it up, or another network's going to pick it up somewhere. Exactly. Like, it's, I don't know, I suppose it's the age we live in. Yeah. The social media is... Class everyone as a celebrity these days. If you exactly. if you got so many followers, then you're yeah. a celebrity. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with it. But like, I get why they broadcasted the fight. Yeah, like exactly. Fucking, like just money for the taking. But like, also make sure that like both parties are training. Yeah, make sure like don't come out like that Churdley's dude and just like, yeah, and look like you've never had a punch thrown at you in your life. <laughs> like the dude through a have even thrown a punch jab. in the last three months. Like, God, no. Well, like, judging from some other reports that I've seen during the week, which, looking at my notes here, I think I forgot to put down, um, the PVC are like, fucking struggling as a company kind of thing. Seems like they're struggling to pay their fighters. Yeah, well, they, uh, I feel they are. Like, they don't offer, like, nobody gets a guarantee. Oh really? Like, like yeah. And shit. Like it's not like um like Crawford wanted a guarantee and they wouldn't give him one. But like at like at top rank, he was making like guaranteed three million a fight. Yeah, exactly. So like it's hard. Like that's why people who are at the PBC are used to that pay structure, and like people who aren't like haven't been at the PBC want nothing to do with just getting paid on the back end. Mm-hmm. Other fighters want a guarantee, like the zone. They pay everybody. Like you sign your contract or whatever. Like Canelo signed that massive deal. It was like three hundred and something million dollars over, like eleven or ten fights. Yeah, and it was like a set amount every single time he fought that he was getting paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like he had a guarantee. He didn't have to worry about what the fight sold or nothing. He was making money. Exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah, the PBC. It looks like they are struggling because they can't give nobody a guarantee. Everything's like paid for on the back end. Mm. Like spent, like Errol Spence, he'd be getting paid on the back end of pay per views now. Yeah, exactly. Like that's why Javonta Davis, he's not a big name, but he's still on like pay per view. Mm-hmm. Why? Like he's a big name, but he's not like pulling in numbers. Like no, God no, those pay per views like, are fucking terrible. The, like the real top dogs are. And he wouldn't I, even be pulling in the same numbers that Garcia is pulling in, really, just because of Garcia's Instagram following. And, well, my overall point yeah, pretty is much. really the fact that, like, like you said, like someone's gonna like broadcast these fights regardless. Yeah, yeah. So it makes more sense for the zone that already has the infrastructure to do something like that to just you know fuck it, why not make the money and have yeah, it, have it run smoothly too? Yeah. Because other companies could try pick it up and just run it like shit. Like exactly. it's already a shit show, but like you don't need a shit show run like shit. But it's just the whole thing of like, yeah, no other company has the capability of doing that. What's what are top ranked and PVC going to do? Are they going to just going to put it on as a pay per view for like seventy dollars that no one's going to pay for? Yeah, exactly. No, people like, are already paying it as own subscription, which is fourteen dollars. You get access to way more fucking content, and that's bringing in more subscribers to the base. Yeah, and then it's a smart business move. Yeah, yeah it, it might be an embarrassment to boxing or whatever, but if these people are just going to keep doing it, they're going to find a way to do it. Why not make the bag? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Exactly. Yeah. No. Nah, fuck. Exactly. Because, like, you know, if the article that I was reading has any credence towards it, it looks like PBC might be completely failing as a company, and then all of those fighters become free agents anyway. They would go to Top Rank, they would go to Zone. there's nowhere else to go. 
Yeah, exactly. Like to your point on pay per view, like would they just like sting the American people for Wilder versus Alania? Like we, yeah. spoke, we spoke about it last week. It Seventy four dollars American for what? Yeah, like, like a, a one fight beforehand and then a fight that lasted less than a minute. We'll yeah, probably, you probably got. Yeah, there would have been maybe two fights beforehand and the main fight for your yeah, seventy five odd dollars. Like yeah. even yeah. though like they're putting pay per view on the zone. You're still getting an eight fight card. Exactly. Like you're yeah. getting value for your dollar. Yeah, and 100%. then, like, you still get, like, the decent names that aren't fighting, like, a massive name. Mm-hmm. Like, you still get their fights for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Like, the last fight that we're going to talk about today, Diaz versus Cepeda, like, that's free on the zone. Yeah. I think, like, I'm not sure about Taylor huge. being pay per view or anything like that, but I know that Diaz versus Cepeda is free, and that's a fucking good fight. Yeah. 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 And, like, I mean, at, free to subscribers, but yeah. Yeah. And it works for us here like in Australia because like we don't get all of the events that happen in America. Exactly. Whereas like every single event over the 12 months we get on the zone. We have access to it if we want like, to. That's the point. Like if we want to watch a fucking uh, main event fight, we have to go somewhere that has a Foxtel connection and pay yeah. for it or like pay for yeah. a KO subscription, which, you know, like makes it accessible. But And then even then, like, not everything ends up on that. Exactly. And like everyone's complaining, but like who have you had to pay for? You've had to pay to watch AJ and Canelo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like who? Who else has been pay per view? Mm-hmm. I can't think of anybody else that's been no, pay per view. No, like just sitting here off the top of my I head. I mean, Floyd versus Deji is pay per view, but that's Floyd. That's a different category of like. Obviously, if he's involved, it's gonna be a pay per view because yeah. he needs his fucking cash. Yeah, but he's like just putting on like exhibition shit shows. Like exactly when you're talking about people who are actually active and like the biggest names in the sport right now. Mm-hmm. It's AJ and Canelo. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're the only two people you've had to pay pay per view for. Exactly. Regardless if you're anywhere else, you'd still have to pay per like pay per view, but it would be more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. <laughs> like it's just makes sense, really. Yeah, it does yeah, at disagree. the end of the day. Speaking of Wilder and AJ, uh, Wilder said, "I'm not sure whether it was before his fight against Alanius or in the post fight press conference or anything after that." He said that he's like more leaning towards fighting. AJ at Wembley than he is bothering with the WBC eliminator bullshit. Yeah, right. That's a fun fight. It is a fun fight. They they haven't fought yet, have they? No. No. Yeah, fucking earth. Well, up, lads. Well, I, I can go into depth on that. That's I a, think we'll a, get into that later. That, yeah, right. That's a whole topic in itself. The backstory sort of is there. Yeah. But uh, anyway, moving on to a little but, bit more Wilder news, which I was supposed to mention last week. He, just before you go on, he's like, Wilder's also mentioning something about fighting AJ in Africa. As well, or in Nigeria. Oh, no, 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 you're right. I did see so, that as well. Something like that. Yeah, he wants to fight because him. AJ's parents are Nigerian, and Wilder's got Nigerian heritage as well. I think the last time there was a fight in Africa would have been Ali Frazier. Yeah, true. That's going to be fucking huge, then, really. But like, in Anthony so Joshua goes over to Africa, and he's like a fucking god, like walking yeah, around. Right. Like you just see like mobs of That's people, cha- like yeah. mobs of people chasing so him. I'm running out of the building. Yeah. And fucking caves and shit. <laughs> like, it's just... <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, moving on to a bit more wilder news, which I was supposed to mention last week. <clears throat> he cried at the post-fight press conference about his opponent being potentially hurt and, like, the way that people act about that, like, oh, he's faking it kind of thing. And so Wilder got upset and shed a few tears and then everybody turned on him this week, you know, because I'm sure you know what I'm about to mention. I'm on, body on my record. Exactly. A couple of years ago, he went like live before a fight or like in a fucking interview or some shit. And it was said, oh, on, I want a body on my record. It was on um whatever the I don't even know what it is, but like it's got like that, I think it's got that like Charlemagne the God and whoever oh, else yeah, they yeah, do yeah, like that radio talk. thing. Breakfast yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was on there. And <laughs> he's like, Oh, I want I want a body on my record and, and now shit. He's crying because he nearly heard it guy. Yeah, so he's and now he's like because everyone like says like, Oh, he's faking and he's like, Oh man, man. We both were a family. Shut up, cunt. But, Shut the fuck up. But then, like, it's at the same time. Oh, God, I'll just throw this in here. Like, it's at the same time he's going, I want a body on my record. But then turn around and going, I want to get as much money f- as I can for, like, Joshua because we put our lives on the line in here and then, like, advocating for fighters' health. It's like, you can't advocate for fighters' mm. health but also want a body on your record. No, 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 like, you like, can't yeah. have it both ways. <laughs> like, you can't do that. No. God, no. Like me hating... People taking drugs in sports, but like I'm all about Ben just getting two start boys. <laughs> I can still wait for some news on that, eh? Dude, it's been super quiet, eh? Um, uh, be well, that happens. on that, uh, Nigel's yeah. called for Connor to fight 
Caruso at 160. Yeah, I did see that. I mean, because what, what was the fight going to be at? 157, I think. Yeah. And after, because uh, Junior still made the weight cut mm. and got to 157 on fight day, like he would have had to for the weigh-in. Yeah. And he posted a photo on the social media and then Nigel Ben seen it. And apparently, like, got in contact with Senior and was like, oh, fuck, I'm sorry. I didn't realise, like, it was going to, yeah, like, do that to him. So, like, he's told Connor apparently, if that fight happens, it's got to be up. A it's got to be up at 160. Yeah, I mean, that just shows the respect, like, through the two dads, really. Um, everyone wants to see that fucking fight. I think. Yeah. I feel like it should have been at 160 anyway. Like, yeah, what yeah, was, yeah like, like, it's not that what's, much. Yeah, what's the three what, pounds, really? It's like, yeah, it was like 157 and a half or something. So, like, you can't, like, two and a half pounds. Like, what's yeah. the difference between Connor putting on the extra two and a half? Like, it's, yeah. I mean, like, it all depends what happens with, like, the results that come out because they're fucking obviously still fucking around with them. So yeah. It could come out, like, yeah, his other samples have, like, tested positive too. Yeah, so that's if that's the out, case, then it's like sayonara. And like more to just make it at 160 and then put a rehydration clause in makes more sense to me. And it mm. leads more like because Connor can't balloon up to 175 because yeah, he just exactly. doesn't he just doesn't carry that weight. But like you could make it so like on flight day Connor can't be anything over like 168. Yeah. Or like 165 or something. Mm -hmm. And then you know after they weigh in at 12 o'clock in the day he's gonna go drink and eat whatever the fuck he wants and come in at 175 roughly. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah, hopefully uh, Ben's tests come back clear and they can fucking make that fight fucking happen. Like, I feel like if it just gets made in, like, if Ben gets, like, done and he gets suspended for four years, like, is that fight still relevant in four years? Exactly. Whereas, like, Eubank's a bit past his... Eubank's, like, then. 32, 33 now. Yeah, Eubank's yeah, probably, like, yeah. near hanging up the gloves then. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, by that stage, it's not an exciting fight. Like, nah. I want to see it like now why like, it's like exciting as fuck. Exactly. But I don't think you could get four years, probably like six month ban or something maybe, but like not four years. That's yeah, fucking I think so. a bit over the top. Mm. Massively over the top. But, um, um, we'll see what happens there, I guess. We're finishing up on that Wilder news anyway. The Wilder Ruiz Jr. apparently will be announced as a final eliminator for the WBC belt. Apparently the WBC have ordered that. Already? It's, yeah, apparently it's been ordered. Okay, there you go. But, um, anything that I'm seeing says Wilder doesn't want to borrow of it. Well, like, and interestingly the enough, the fight itself makes sense. Yeah, like Wilder versus Ruiz, just the fight. Don't, yeah, no mandatory position, nothing being put in place. That mm. makes sense. Like it's two PBC guys. Like it, the fight's easy enough to make, but like to have it as a mandatory to fight Fury is a bit fucking ludicrous. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. I, don't get I how, really like, don't care about Wild of Fury 4. No, no, no. I don't think any... I was talking about uh that to Ryan and Dave the other day. Like, yeah, they sent me, like... Because Hellenius just looks like Fury, pretty much. Like, they're close from a distance, and if you're, yeah, like, not much. looking for it. But they're like, oh, these guys fought again? I'm like, no, no, no. But, like, you know, this is in potential of them fighting a fourth time. Mm -hmm. And even they were like, why? Like, why four times? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little yeah. bit over the top. And everyone's like, oh, it's like the greatest heavyweight trilogy. Like, I watched that fight back probably maybe a month ago. And, like, apart from Wilder knocking Fury down in the fourth round, like, that third fight was just another one-way beatdown, if you actually sit there and watch it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, Wilder done fuck all apart from knock him down. Like, Wilder was knock out him down. Feet from, yeah. like, the second round. And Fury's just fucking, like, battering him and then, like, knocks him out in, like, the 11th. Or whatever it was like it's like just one way traffic apart from that small portion where wilder like hits him and it's like oh fuck could wilder put him out but yeah. then apart from yeah. that like if you watch it it's just fury continuing to dominate him for yeah like mm -hmm. you don't need to see, you don't need to see like yeah if it was like a you know like if they were a bit closer in like them last two fights you could consider like all right it's worth seeing a fourth yeah. one but not yeah you just like wilder just got fucked on for the last two fights and especially really. like not now like like, in two years, maybe. Yeah. Like, if, like, Wilder goes on, like, a good run and beats yeah. whoever, you know, Fury beats fucking another couple of the top names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah, it wasn't that long ago we seen that fight. Yeah. Like, it was, like, before I moved back down here. Yeah. Which it wasn't was, that long ago. It was 12 months ago. Yeah. yeah like, exactly. Fury was only, like, posting something about it the other day on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like, 12 months since he beat, like, 
Wilder in that epic trilogy, and I was like, it wasn't really that epic. No. There was a draw, which you should have won the fight in like anyway on points. Yeah. yeah. And then the second fight, you just ran through him. And the third, and the third like fight, you pretty much just bashed him and then knocked him out. Yeah. But like touched the ground twice yourself. Yeah, exactly. And like the second knockdown was just because he didn't want to fucking stand up anymore. Mm. He was like, oh, fuck, I'll go back down, get my legs back under me properly. And then it was like smooth sailing from then on out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't worried. Yeah, it's not a fight I don't think anyone needs to see. Well, no. speaking of fights that nobody needs to fucking see, Chisora vs Fury confirmed for Tottenham Hotspur Stadium December 3rd. Fans are vowing to boycott the event. Now, I've seen some bullshit come out during the week of uh, Frank Warren trying to get everybody's fucking hopes up. Been like, oh, you know, like the tickets just come out and 50,000 people have bought them. 90% of those tickets have ended up on resale sites. But, like, he can say, oh, like, 50,000 people have brought them. Even if 50,000 people have, like, brought them, it's only because he's fighting Chisora. Yeah. Chisora is another big name in the UK. Exactly. Like, yeah. people turn out, he's lost fucking probably eight, nine fights. But, like, he, he's all heart and he's all action. So, that, people yeah. just rock up to watch him. That's yeah. the only like, reason people are, because it seems like a lot of people in the media are real fucking pissed off with not only the fact that, like, Fury did the whole, like, Joshua thing of fucking around and then, like, because that's the thing you mentioned the other week, like, I'm pretty sure you said it, that the Chisora Fury fight was mentioned before he started talking about AJ. Like, weeks before. Exactly. So this was already in the books. The AJ thing was just a fucking, like, all of just a fucking ramp up because he knew that AJ wasn't going to be able to make the fight in time or that nothing was going to get solved in time because it was too big of a fight. But that's why there was all them deadlines. Exactly, yeah. He's setting like, all these arbitrary deadlines that he has no right to set. Um, And then, yeah, everybody just seems to be cottoning on to this whole fucking, like, he's, like, off the fucking rails. Like, what's his fucking deal? Like, yeah. you guys send the video of, to me of, like, a fucking press conference. So I think it was you or one of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> just sitting there just chewing dude, his face like, there's no this. way he's not on cocaine. Like, like, tell me he's not. But I, lit- but I literally right. watched, like, two minutes and eight seconds or something. I was like, fuck, I've got to send this to the boys. Like, yep. look at him. He's just it's off his enough. gut. Like, he's, like, there's, like, three things. And then, like, the ca- camera's on him and it pans away. And he's just, like, <laughs> like, just, <laughs> like, just chewing his face off. Like I said, whoever his manager is just needs to fucking lock him up until it's fight time. Yeah. Don't let him out. Feed him cocaine and just sparring partners. And that's just all he gets. Let him not yeah, do anything until it's time to fight. Do not let him front the media in any way, shape, or form. No, yeah, I think no, he's just a liability just in that sense. Fucking embarrassment of himself. The whole, yeah, the whole, like, AJ thing, but was just, like, a way to get attention. It's yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Like, pretty much. Fucking bullshit. Payday. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just a fucking liar. And I mean, uh, all right, we'll sort of finish off the heavyweight news here. AJ won't be fighting this year, confirms Eddie Hearn. Uh, which is probably a good thing because he didn't really have the highest level of competition to go against anyway. He says like maybe like late January, early February, hopefully. So leaves a bit more of an open time frame to get somebody who's a bit higher up kind of thing. I think it might be a little bit of a tactic considering what we just spoke about pushing the fight back and actually giving AJ a bigger name kind of thing to say like, not a, not that AJ like takes easy fights anyway, but I think it is a little bit of a tactic on Hearn's part of saying like, He's fighting better fucking competition than the heavyweight champion who, you know, wanted to fight him but yeah. set fucking deadlines that couldn't be met. Yeah, like, I, I just don't understand why, like, Fury done that bullshit. Like, I, like, didn't half believe it from the start. But it's probably fair that AJ does fight to, like, doesn't fight till next year. But the thing that gets Because we were talking about Ariola the other week. Yeah. And that was... Yeah, we were. <laughs> 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 and that was just... <laughs> like that was just the complete mismatch. Yeah, hundred percent. But said it, from um, start, boys. Any boxer against the nipple is a fucking mismatch. <laughs> you just can't have it. Um, yeah, it's not solid odds. I don't reckon. No, no, I'm not a bet for the boxer every time. That's um, for sure. But yeah, there's no point being like Fury and fighting anybody they throw at you and being like, I'm the greatest. It's like, no, no you're not. No, you beat Wilder, who's beat nobody. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like, knocked out 40-something people and didn't get nowhere. Like, nobody's record was anything of note. I feel like, like if Fury wants to be as great as he thinks he is, he's got to fight AJ. It's like, that's the fight, fight to kind of, like, 
cement his legacy. If he just goes out there and beats AJ, like, out of our generation, who's a better heavyweight? Because that's the thing, exactly. too. He literally could have just had it his way if he wasn't a fuckwit. He could have fought AJ in early January. Yeah. Then fought Usyk in the middle of the year. Retired. Done. Retired. The greatest, greatest heavyweight of, of his generation. Yeah. We could have fought AJ in the middle of December. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. AJ literally only wanted like, two more weeks. He was like, give me December 17th. And they're like, no. <laughs> Even though they already had no. three dates booked. Yeah. But they they had Carter Stadium booked for December 17th. Yeah, it's so weird. But they didn't want to do that because... Why? <laughs> because they didn't, just, just they didn't want to fight AJ. Like, yeah, that's, I think they don't like money, apparently. Like, that's the only reason why. I just don't think Fury wants that fight. Like, that's not a great fight He's for him, bitch, really. He's a bitch, man. Because as soon as it started getting announced, everyone who's anyone came out straight away and went, that's a bad fight for Fury. Yeah. Well... Yeah, it's, just, it's not a great fight for Joshua either, but it's not like it depends like, what Joshua like comes. we spoke about. Fury's not going to be able to go out there and do the same thing to AJ that he does to Wilder. He's not going to be able to lean on him and fucking all yeah, this and that because too strong, too yeah. strong, and too good of an inside game. He's like, just going to pop back, hit you with that up. Yeah, he's not yeah. like he's not going to stand there and like fight in AJ's face. Like AJ on the inside is deadly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got fucking like, his hands are fast uppercut. for a big man. Is that dude that he landed like eight uppercuts on? Uh, yeah, like that, bro. You really don't want none of that. No. God, no. But yeah, like the the only reason behind it is like that's a fuck. That's the biggest heavyweight fight of this fucking generation. Like exactly. the only reason it didn't happen is someone's scared. It's not because of fucking money problems or like, oh, it wouldn't have been a draw. That's the, the fucking draw. I reckon going into that situation, the dude who has the O and everything to lose is yeah. probably the guy that's scared. Yeah, well, especially to have the way... AJ was after his fight with Yusik, like the second one. Like, you can tell that motherfucker's going to come out and try to kill whoever he fights next. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, everyone likes to talk about, like, Fury's the fucking greatest boxer of all time. Fury's not half the boxer that Yusik is. No. Not whatsoever. Yeah, no. no. And AJ has spent 24 rounds with Yusik. Doesn't matter yeah, how. Yeah, I don't think Fury, like, he could move when he beat Klitschko, but I don't think he can move like that, man. Not anymore. Like, no. his legs aren't what they were. He's got, I don't think, weird looking legs too, boys. I'm gonna throw that out there. Mm. He's very big and very skinny legs. Yeah, dude, it looks so fucking weird to see him in boxing shorts and you're like this massive upper body, and then you're like, what fucking legs are those? It's like a keg on toothpick. Yeah, harder. Anyway, um, I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of who, I guess, who can AJ fight. Yeah, that's at it. that time of the year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Like it would, like make sense to go like wilder. Yeah. Like, go wild, go for Wilder at that time of the year, especially like when the, like the um, undisputed fight is meant to happen mm-hmm. early next year. So, you got Usyk and Fury fighting each other. Yeah, that's Like, good. I'd rather see Wilder if, like, Fury beats Usyk. I'd rather see Wilder get back to fighting Fury f- through beating AJ. Yeah. Yeah. Rather yeah. than, like, taking some little fucking... Crash can fight. Yeah, and, like, some little bullshit ring that the PBC and the WBC have, like, set up. Because, like, there was only one way back to that title and you weren't, like, you weren't getting that mandatory spot if you're not a PBC fighter. No. Like, it was fucking Ruiz and Ortiz, both with the PBC. Mm -hmm. They had Wilder versus Hellenius, both with the PBC. Yep. So, like, no matter what, it's a PBC fighter that would end up fighting for that belt. Um, I'm just going to tune in real quick here. There's a... Just a small bit of um griff, believe it or not. Um, KFC has sponsored Andy Ruiz. Um, yeah, that's all. It was Snickers. It was Snickers. Yeah, it yeah, was legitimately Snickers. Snickers sponsoring. <laughs> but he, he nearly ate them out of business. You can only make so many Snickers. Like you, can, you don't see them around anymore, do you? No, nah, you don't. You don't see many Snickers around. Um, but you can cook up a lot more chicken at a time. Like that scene from The Simpsons Halloween episode. So you like Snickers, don't you? Yes. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just a small riff fact. All right. Well, let's move on to some fights that are actually fucking happening. Uh, Taylor vs. Catterall 2 confirmed February 4th, 2023. Say what? Taylor vs. Catterall. Josh Taylor, the uh, okay, yeah, former yeah. undisputed champion at 140 because he got stripped of the IBF belt, I believe. Just for not defending? Yeah, or? just for not yeah, thing, yeah. just that mandatory bullshit but yeah, yeah. The, uh, this he fought Jack Catterall last time and it was widely believed that Jack Catterall yeah, I think, that fight I think yep. he got that belt taken off him because they wanted him to go like 
because he'd won that fight, they wanted him to go in like a different direction and face the mandatory. And he yeah. went, and he was like, you know, I like I got to have this rematch because mm-hmm. everybody's saying he beat me. Yeah. Which watching that fight, I thought Taylor lost. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And I watched it back, and I was like, yeah, like it's not a huge margin, but Catterall definitely won. Yeah, like it was, but because it was in like Taylor's hometown, he got the victory. Yeah, yeah right. so I think like Taylor took that road of being like, no, nah, I'm just gonna go back and which correct this. Props to him too. Like exactly. not many fighters would go, especially if it was like a tough fight, which I'm guessing it was. It was not a, a lot a of fighters fight. would be like, oh fuck, I'll just go back and try well, and correct that. Well, we seen it last weekend with um. Uh, the Maya Baumgartner fight, like straight up, yeah, by Baumgartner yeah. came out and was like, no, 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 like, we're not doing a rematch. I'm going for undisputed, which is like, you know, fair enough to go for undisputed, but it's also like that was a really contested match kind of thing. You mm. should probably do that again before you can say that you're an undefeated, undisputed champion. Yeah, yeah, that that fight should have been run back. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, when's that fight lined up for? February fourth, twenty twenty three, and that'll be on top rank. Mm, if something. the weight cut was as hard as they say it was for Taylor. For that fight, it might just go the same way. Yeah, it could do. If and it then, was like real hard though, he's probably going to like create it a different way. Maybe come into the start of the camp, the touch ladder. Well, there's a lot of talk about him going to 147 before this rematch was announced. Yeah, is that higher than what he fought? Yeah, yeah he's, he's at 140, so he'll 140. be going up to like the same after the fight. Yeah, the same weight class as uh, Crawford and Spence on that. Okay. Yeah, after the fight, they were saying the weight cut and. Everything was like getting harder for him to like yeah. it was getting heaps harder for him to make the way. Because he's yeah, pretty big for a one forty. Yeah, so, but he's not tall kind of thing, but he is a bit. He's like muscly kind of thing. He's built. Yeah, he's like, and he's definitely like getting at that age now where his body's gonna want to put on the weight. Exactly. Yeah. So just more the yeah, like he just can't, just doesn't have that elasticity anymore kind of thing. Um, but speaking of people that move around on weight, uh, Shakur Stevenson suggests a lightweight super six tournament. He uh, must have been listening to he us must, a couple of weeks he ago. Must he must have the um, podcast uh, shout out. Um, I mean, it's the only way to go with that lightweight division because they're all just going to shit talk each other and not fight each other unless mm. something like that happens. Exactly. So I feel like, yeah, that's the only way to go. And then, like, who would you go to be Shakur? To be Loma, Davis, Garcia, Haney, George? I don't know who's the sixth person you put in there. I don't even know if I'd have Garcia in there. Has he done enough to be in there? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. But I don't think he's done enough to be in there. Like, if he goes and fights Tang. I don't think it matters, to be honest. Yeah. My opinion's slightly changing on him. I I like him as a person and a fighter. I don't hate him. Dude. I just don't think he's, like, The last person to punch between photo frames was Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Like, let's think about that for a fucking minute. Yeah, he's, what do they call him? Fucking Flash, whatever the fucking. I don't fucking know, but like the, it's called the Phantom yeah. Punch kind of thing. Oh, dude, like right That, that you punch that just doesn't fast. exist. Like, you shouldn't be able to move your fucking hands that fast. No, it was, I don't think anyone can get their head out of the way. It was point four. like Ali got his hand from his hip, like from his hip to chin in point four of a second. Point four of a second. That's mm-hmm. fucking, that's his fuck boy. <laughs> um, how quick's the guy say to it? I don't know, but like you've got to Pretty think close, that maybe cameras are even a little bit like quicker with oh, yeah, frames these days. So yeah. for it to better. just like it, if you've seen the video, yeah, he literally is just standing there. He dodges a punch, and then old mate just goes and just yeah. fucking collapses. It is they nice. slow it down like three times to actually catch the fucking his arm moving. Yeah, so he's got some, and he's got some decent power in that too. He's only getting better and bigger, and he's I don't know. I think he he is getting better and. Yeah, he's, like, growing, so he's obviously getting bigger. But, like, I just, I swear, like, one of his last fights that I've seen wasn't even, fucking like 10-round fight. It was, he like, a six-round fight or something. The greatest comp- no, it was, like, a 10- or 12-round fight. But no, no, not his latest ones. Like, probably, like, two, three fights back, maybe. Just, like, uh, little short fights. And it's, like, how's he uh, going to go from that to being champion? He fought, I, don't know, I don't remember. He's fought, he fought two people time. since uh, Campbell. And Campbell was a 12-round fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm thinking And they've all been 12-round fights because they've been, like, semi, like, eliminators for certain things or like for lower titles and shit like that yeah see i feel like if he went from campbell and then like raised his competition a bit he could be in like the running to you'd be like yeah he should be in that competition i just wish he'd shut the fuck up Garcia. yeah like that's just, what, that's also what puts him there too he's yeah like he's, he's, he's keeps following like chatting talk shit and... about all these like top people or we'll yeah. throw him in there he's got a big fuck off following too like a huge following so that helps his case too and like don't get me wrong that cunt can fucking bar. 
Yeah. Like, okay. I'm not trying to be like, oh, he doesn't have the talent. He's got the fucking talent. I just don't know if he's earned the spot there yet. See, like, I don't... But then I think, like, he like beat Campbell, which is, like, not easy work. But if he just did something impressive after that, like, you can't beat Campbell and then just fight two fucking trash cans. Well, let's just no look sense. at it quickly in a sense of, like, who do you guys reckon he would beat out of those five names that I mentioned? Let's just start with, like, Haney. Because I'm pretty I think sure he beat, beat him, like, I think he clipped Haney. Action. I honestly probably see him hitting Haney he's and fast. Haney going... And he's probably know. got more... He's probably got as long arms kind of thing. He's definitely taller. I see Loma just... Like he's Garcia the fucker. His boxing he's, pedigree is nowhere near. He's fast enough. I just don't know if his IQ's good enough. Yeah, to Haney's beat a whole someone lot like Haney. Like Haney's like, I mean, he seems to always be thinking. Mm. Yeah, like keeps like everybody else. Like everyone thinks attack, attack, attack. But he looks like he's thinking like defend and attack. Like, well, we, like he's not standing there thinking like, oh fuck, all right, just work, work this, work that. Mm-hmm. Like he's thinking like, if I throw this, what's coming back? Like. He's already trying to think that two steps ahead. Yeah. Where Garcia fights on reaction. Yeah. Sort of thing. And, like, it's sort of, like, I feel similar with, like, Cambosis. He's not going to give you much to react on. Like, Haney doesn't waste the punches we spoke about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My so opinion like, of him's completely changed after that last fight as well. So like, Haney's, I think that's yeah, what... Yeah. So, I think that's what gets... That's what will get Garcia in that fight. Haney's, like, IQ and the, like, not wasting a punch. Whereas, like, I feel like Garcia's got more chance of beating someone like Tank because Tank's coming forward trying mm-hmm. to land them shots. Yeah. Where he's not he's Leaving not thinking of... There. He's not thinking of boxing you straight away. Yeah. He's yeah. thinking of getting in your face, landing something on you and just finishing it early. That does make sense because if he is going to fight um, Haney, Haney's just going to come out, jab, clinch, jab, clinch. Like, he's going to fight his fight. He's yeah. He's going to just try to get into a fucking fire fight with Garcia. Whereas, Whereas Tank is. Yeah, Tank's going like to like Loma's gonna just probably pick fucking Garcia apart, yeah, and like dance around him and yeah, like just not let him set, yeah, like, pep, like pepper him with that jab, yeah. Whereas like Haney will keep it coming at you, but like Loma will just keep like moving and just keep sticking the jab in your face, keep sticking yeah. the jab in your face. What are you thinking about George versus Ryan? Uh, it's a, it depends what George you get though, because like we didn't see the same George that fought Lopez in either of the can- uh, Haney fights. Like, we've seen a definitely more ferocious gym than we did George. 100%. Like, ferocious like, gym. Like, we've seen a ferocious George in the, um... Calm down there, Frankie. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Frank, not touching shit. I think you're a fucking little, little tickle. <laughs> um, yeah, like, against Lopez, we've seen, like, George come out and, like, you know, be ferocious. And then we seen it against Haney. I don't know. We just didn't see that. I see him. If you see like the George that came out against fucking Lopez, I reckon that'd be a good fight. Him and Garcia. I don't know. It's not that like switch and stance, George. I just think he just gets fucking caught by Garcia and goes, no, no. It's like hard. Christ. I feel the same if he does that. Like, but if he fights, I feel like he's just going to get tagged either way mm-hmm. against Garcia. Yeah. Well, then it, like, like eventually. Brings me around to the main question of, like, obviously the subject at this point. How do you reckon Shakur goes against, like, anybody? I haven't watched a lot of his fights, so I don't really have much of an insight. He's like, there, a, feel, but... he's like a Haney that hits harder. Okay, so he's like a kind of, like, smart defensive. In South Yeah. He... I think Shakur goes a long way in it. Mm-hmm. I think, like... His really only problem is, like, Loma. I was going to say, I think, mm. like, you're looking at, like, a Loma and Haney. They're, like, the two... The people that have the IQ to work around him. Yeah, that will give him the problem. Whereas he'll just, I think he'll just box circles around everybody else. Plus, he's got enough power to, like, hurt them when they try and do anything. Yeah. Like, I just don't know how he would go against, like, the pressure fighting of uh, Davis. It'd be interesting. Because there's, like, not many people that fight with that pressure, but, like, are putting, like, precise combinations together as they're coming, like, forward. But for a Floyd... Like, protege, he has really poor defense. Yeah. It looks like it's good because you see it in highlights, but if you actually watch all of his fights, he gets caught a lot more than all of these other lightweights. You could see Haney being more of, like, a Floyd protege. Yeah, 100%. Like, he's, like, fight style. He's definitely studied Floyd a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Davis has always just been a brawler. Like, he's got the 
got the pop. But like, it. yeah, with him not being as good defensively, like you got to remember, Floyd wants nobody to be better than him. Yeah, and that's yeah. also true. Like, <laughs> this, yeah, good wants point. nobody to be better than him. Like, he couldn't have been. Like, he never wanted Canelo to lose again mm-hmm. because he didn't want to say he was the only person that beat him. Like, he's just got that big of an ego where it's like, yeah, I can't let anyone have like anything over me. Like, that's why Davis is so protected. Yeah, that's true. Like, Davis should have already fought half of these top people by now. Yeah, we need to look into whether he's, like, still fucking managed by him or not. Yeah, like, what, it was 20... That's all in the dark. Like, what year was it? 2015, 2016, when I was showing you, like, Davis winning the world title? Yeah. Like, and he's fought nobody at the top, really. No. Yeah, man. since then. That's what I mean. It's like... All been in-house fights. This tournament thing's the best thing ever, because it just forces them to fight each other. Exactly. It's like, like there's no like oh little fucking Twitter battles anymore. Like you've just got to get in there and fight. And finally. it was great in the like heavier weight classes. Yeah, like when they did the boxing world super series. Yeah, it was that was great. great. That was fucking brilliant. Um, all right. Well, moving on to our last bit of boxing news here, believe it or not, uh, Crawford versus David. I don't even say know how to say this. A Venetian for a career high payday, payday. of ten million dollars in oh. December. Payday. Wait, for December. Hang on, my notes are split here. Let me do 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 do. December tenth, Omaha, Nebraska. So hometown fight for Crawford, which he seems to have organised himself, and you know, good on him for getting that fucking bag. Fucking deserves it, man. Like he's, you know, Crawford's the uh, shorter one with the beard. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Fuck, good on you, homie. Get that shit. Or it wins that easily. Yeah, it's a pretty easy fight for him. He's. Probably the payday he deserves. Exactly, man. Like, the payday that he deserves after being fucked around by old Bob for so many years. Yeah, fuck no, for sure. Fucking bullshit that that was, but uh, let's move. I think he gets that done probably in eight. You reckon? Yeah. I've heard the name, like, of an SEN a few few times, so it's not like a no name. That's not a name you forget, Ned. He'd been mentioned a bit with fighting I don't know if I'm saying it right, so fucking who knows if anyone's heard the name. I'm just glad you didn't leave a, like, David Avenissi in here to be like, you know. Just try to figure this name out. Yeah. <laughs> it's David Avenissian. Is that it? Yeah. He's cool. been mentioned in like fight, like to fight like Conor Ben and shit. You know what like, my favorite part is? The fact that you let me mispronounce it yeah, three yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. He told me the real fucking pronunciation. Just looked at you like. <laughs> just looked at me just like, <laughs> hey, that was close enough. <laughs> Don't let it roll, bro. There's so, there's so many guns names. <laughs> oh, dude. Just names everywhere, eh? <laughs> oh, Hell, but, man. And I don't even try. <laughs> yeah, I think Spence gets that done easily. Like, Crawford. easily. Crawford. Yeah. Yep. Spence is fighting somebody, but I'm not yeah, sure then, who. I did see an announcement. Oh, like, Stanny Onus. Not yeah, sure yeah. of his first name, but I have heard that nice name as well. And he's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I got that one right. Did I? I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah, Spence is, like, in the works to fight him as well. I think also late December so that they both have a fight this year. Okay. But what? I'm not sure about the logistics of that. I'm sure we'll get some more news on. But It'll line up with let's... nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. One more fight okay. that, that could possibly be in the works. Your opinion on Benavidez versus Caleb Plant. I heard Benavidez is trying to line it up for somewhere early next year. It's interesting. I reckon Benavidez stomps all over him. Yeah. Does that. Way too much pressure. Does that set up a Benavidez Canelo fight? Does that set it up? You reckon? You would hope so. You because that's been like in so. the talks before, right? Benavidez Canelo. Yeah, it's been like mentioned a shitload, but Canelo's like, oh, I don't really want to fight any Mexican people, so it's like uh. he said that he would if it comes down to it, but he said he'd prefer not to. Like Benavidez is a big one sixty eight. Yeah, man. like he's big, but he leaves himself too open for somebody like Canelo. His pressure fighting is good against somebody like Plant because Plant doesn't have the the not well, he might have the boxing brain to keep him off him, but he definitely doesn't have the power. You come wailing your hands like a windmill against somebody like Canelo, he's gonna live a shot at you and he's gonna move out of the way and you're gonna go, Fuck. Mm. That hurt. That's true. Interesting fight though. It is an interesting fight. Really it's definitely like more of a like it's definitely high level competition than um I'd say it's high level competition than a forty year old triple G. Yeah. But For sure. I still don't is think, only young. Yeah, that's I still don't think he's he's too wild at this point in time he doesn't have enough composure about him especially i think the moment will overtake him to be honest is that because he doesn't have enough respect that's it he thinks that he's just going to be able to walk through canelo until canelo hits him and he goes oh that's uh that's different yeah yeah and even the people he's fighting now like too much respect mm-hmm. like 
not enough respect, sorry, I should say. Like, just yeah. getting in the ring going, I'm going to knock you out. Exactly, because he's just walking <laughs> through people. And just yeah, like, just knocking them out cold. Because he's, it's, and it's not even so much <laughs> like, he probably got a bit of pop kind of thing, but if you've ever seen him fight, he just fights in flurries kind of thing. Like, yeah, he'll just yeah. throw 10 to 13 punches at you. Yeah. Like, and just wear one or two off you because he knows that he's going to land most of his. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. that, like, full Mexican style. Too. Yeah. He's coming forward. Which, yeah, that does not bode well for you against somebody like Canelo with, like, the boxing IQ that he has. You know, we've seen people like Kirkland. Look, look what happened to Kirkland when he tried that. Exactly, man. But, um, oh, man. Have you guys seen that brutal? I'm pretty sure you sent it to me one day. It's a brutal video. They take somebody Canelo went, out? They take Canelo yeah. out Fuck of the video. Sideways, eh? It's so crazy. They completely, like, just, like, through video editing, they take Canelo out. So all you see is Kirkland just getting Shots. Looks like he's just get hit by cars, man. Looks <laughs> like just like <laughs> little mini cars. It's like, who's this? Like, it's, you see, yeah, you see off. the way that his body like vibrates and shit when he's getting hit by shots. It's absolute insanity. Like, I would not want to deal with that. No, fuck no. No. But like, yeah, I just don't think it bodes well to like have that style against Canelo either. He's too no, calculated. Not at all. Um. Then anyway, moving on to some UFC news here. Uh, Whitaker vs. Costa apparently set for UFC 284 in Perth. It's a fun fight. That Great is a fight. fight. I, I say, uh, I dare say Whitaker probably wins it. He's just too good. Technically good, yeah. Yeah, that's a fun fight. Like, um, Costa's got good chin, good takedown defense, good striking. But yeah, can he get it done? No. Nah. I think Bobby's got it covered. Bobby knocks, bro. He's just going to yeah. come through. Uh, but it's just all action, too. Yeah. Like it like, should yeah. be. Yeah. That'd be, a, yeah, that'd be a fun fucking fight. Yeah. Be 100%. All and then, like, that's going to be a fucking stack card, which we'll yeah, you gotta imagine, yeah. talk about in a couple of minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Colby versus comes out apparently in the works for UFC 285 in London to be headlined by Usman Edwards 3. That's a super. Both them. Fucking think um, of the fucking good fight. Both talk for that build up. Oh, huge. I mean. Fucking Cold. Covington's already done that much trash talk on, yeah, yeah. Come, yeah. on come shot. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it's going to be very good. Oh, that's that's probably on site for old um, Jemayev and uh, Colby there. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. you got to imagine. And, I mean, I don't think Colby's, like, real into the whole street fighting thing. Like, Masvidal fucking jumped him in the street and he called the cops and shit on him. Yeah. I think you're going to get probably jumped again, bud. Like, Jemayev yeah, yeah. don't give a... Fuck. Yeah, it's, and especially since, yeah, you've been calling him come short, even though there's been no talks of you fighting yeah, until yeah, this point in time. Like, at all. Whatsoever. Already got something to hold against you. Yeah. That's a that's a sick fight, though. Uh, my F's just too strong, I think. Yeah. I, I mean, their wrestling is probably going to be pretty evenly matched. Uh, Colby coming from, like, a pretty heavy wrestling background. I see Shamaya being too strong for, like, yeah, anyone of that division, to be honest. Mm-hmm. What was the other fight? Uh, Edwards, Usman. Yeah, Usman, Edwards, three. I see Usman winning that, like, just to get his belt back. But like, goes to wrestling, I would say. Yeah, I don't want to see Edwards lose his belt, man. That's just, like, a sick feel-good moment, man. It was, like, just mad watching him, like, get After dominated. So yeah, like, yeah, being pretty fucking highly ranked and then just coming out, landing that head kick in the last round. Like, after living a pretty similar lifestyle to uh, Dillian White. Like you look up Dillian, uh, you look up um Edwards on Google from like you know 2018 through, and it's just like him getting like a video of him just getting raw dogged by Dana. Yeah, just fucking stiffed left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. The poor bastard. Well, I think he even got that shot, and like no one expected him to get it done. Like they expected it to Usman just to dominate yeah, well, him. Like, and then how long had it been since he fought? I only fought Nate last before that, and like before that Edwards. Yeah. Like, and how long How long had that been? That Fucking probably like 12 months at yeah. least. And then, yeah, I'd say 12 months. And then before was just that, like, he ages. He, yeah, I'll feed you to Usman and you can fuck off. And yeah. then he wins and then he's like, ah. Oh, yeah. Got the job done. <laughs> got the job done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't want to see him just like have to fight Usman and just get fucking dominated again. Like, that sucks. But I feel like Edward's coaches are like, real fucking high level the way they just like break shit down like no he's gonna move his head this way the tiniest bit and when he does you can kick him like and he's gonna go out and that's exactly fucking what happened you yeah, watch like the breakdown of it shot. hey because it wasn't just a lucky shot no no like drilled that shit, bro. yeah you have you have like a video of his coach talking about it before 
before the fight and he goes that's like one of the coaches showing the other coach like see how he kind of dips this way and the other coach is like oh shit he does mm. it's just like that's fucking next level coaching man just to like the smallest little oh, he just does this one little thing and they'll like fucking kick him yep yeah and even at the end of the fourth just the way they kind of like rally him up like you know you're just gonna fucking throw this away this is your only fucking chance you're gonna throw it away yeah that video is fucking sick next level bro just thinking about it gives me goosebumps mm-hmm. i don't want to see him lose Gives him it to him in the corner. It should right. be a good fight regardless. I mean, yeah, if Edwards can come out and, like, you know, do what he did in the first and, you know, fucking dominate the wrestling, make it a stand-up fight, he might have that chance of knocking him out again. But but I think if, if he does that, I think, like, Usman knows. Yeah. Like, I'm not standing with you. Like, yeah, yeah. The whole five rounds, Usman's going to try and get that fight to the ground. Like what he's done yeah, with 100%. Woodley type thing, eh? Pardon? What he done with Woodley, just fucking yeah. pressure wrestling and yeah, and like try and take him down from like the get go straight away, like yeah, because even if like I feel like even if Edwards gets him down and like dominates wrestling for a round, Usman's still gonna go back to that. Yeah, yeah, he's not gonna stop. He's not gonna try fucking. Yeah, he's not gonna stri- try and stand and trade with fucking Edwards. Yeah, I mean what happened last time? Because like that ain't- even like before him beating fucking Usman, he's always had like quality striking. Yeah, Edwards. Yeah. So like. That was, he pieced Nate up, like, until the last round when Nate flipped him. Yeah, and like, that was, like, a enough fight that fucking... Like, the first fight, Usman knew. Yeah. With Edwards, I can't fucking stand and trade. He just fucking wrestled him the whole fight. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just took him down. And then I think he, like, lost the first round wrestling. It's like, oh, fuck, I'll just beat you at what you're good at then. Mm. No. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> no. Didn't work. But, um, I mean, yeah, that's an exciting card. Mm-hmm gonna be a uh, hell of a lot of shit talking yeah yeah definitely that co is gonna be fucking intense Fuck yeah uh well speaking of you know london or people from there anyway uh patty the baddie pimblet added to ufc 282 card against jared gordon i don't know who jared gordon is do you guys uh no i don't think he's anyone that's like no. too well known well because patty's not really ranked yet is he no and he's doing it pretty smart the way he's like jumping up type of thing yeah he's pretty much said like if you want me to fight crazy fucking contenders pay me a lot of money he's like i have the fan base yeah if not i'm just going to gradually work my way up and yeah that's what he's doing so how do you guys see his trajectory with the current state of the lightweight division uh a really good jiu-jitsu yeah yeah uh got a good chin real good chin Mm -hmm. i don't think his striking is like the best but it's not bad yeah i see him doing pretty well when he is ready to like make the climb i just think he's like taking his time getting getting used to it all and like because he came from cage warriors i feel yeah which is like sure. they're like a big company for yeah that's the but... same promotion mcgregor come from yeah. yeah yeah but it's nothing like you know there's nothing like getting to the ufc and it's like the fucking they always be like you know the bright lights be, might be too much and this that and the other and it's like it would be a thing that's like oh, he's perfect for it yeah he's made for it but i feel like he's just adjusting well to it and like mm-hmm. not just diving into it and yeah like getting derailed so to say so, I think he's doing it the smart way. Yeah, yeah, and he's only young. Yeah. Like, there's no point rushing to get to that point. Like, no, fuck no. Even in, like, two or three fights, you throw him in anywhere near Islam, and Islam's choking him out. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Like, he needs that building, and, like, you know, someone who's got good wrestling and, like, good grappling and shit is who he needs to go in with before. And, like, just work him there, work him there. Don't fucking just feed him to the wolves straight away. No. Yeah, that's it. I feel like he's got beef with a, a ranked... Someone ranked in the top 10. Does. I'm not sure who it is, though. They're like through. Josh Emmett, maybe? Josh no. Emmett ranked like. Josh low Emmett's in like a, a bald dude. I don't even know if he fights anymore. I don't know. I remember somebody. Yeah. But yeah, there was like some beef at like. A press conference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that could be a good fight because it's like, you know, a pretty close fight as well. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, it gets him in the top 10. Good on him. He's a fucking weird dude, eh? Just like. Trying to understand that guy in any type of press conference. I've listened to what? enough of the accent so I can understand it kind of thing. Yeah, like the Scouser accent. And used like. to watch fucking, like, all that Geordie Shaw and all that kind uh, of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I fucking, it's just like, yeah, and I can hear it perfectly. After now. sitting there and listening to Tony Bellew. Oh, yeah, man. Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Boxing fucking things where I can understand mm-hmm. Patty, like, fucking, no He's, tomorrow. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I was, like, listening to a video and fucking of, like, Patty, and he was talking about, like, his dad, like, walked out of, like, he was in, like, an apartment building or something. Like, his dad's, like, walked out of it, like, down onto the street or some shit. 
He's like walking along the road and there's like these couple of 14-year-old kids or some shit. And like kids are like, hey, you're Paddy the Baddies, that aren't you? He's like, yeah, lad, why is that? He goes, why the fuck are you still living there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny as fuck. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, needs that payday, really. Yeah, hey, he's, like, he's, like, he's like, everyone thinks I'm a fucking millionaire and I'm not. Because yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. everyone knows who he is. Give him, give him some money, well, Dana. I mean, speaking of people looking for paydays, uh, our last point here, which probably leads us into our first point of the show, the UFC 280 breakdown. Dane is interested in booking Aljo versus Cejudo at 135. Go fuck yourself, you garden, no? I mean, you know, yeah, <laughs> probably like earn your shot, but... Um, I had full silence there was something. Mm. <laughs> there was just complete disbelief on your faces of just like, why? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really get why. Look but at like, bullshit, man. You've been out for three years. You retired of your own fucking accord. Yeah, you don't deserve it. No, you don't. But that's not how the UFC work. Um, I would just make fucking fights for the sake. Like, look at. We'll get into it, but like, look what happened at the end of two eighty. Yeah, exactly. And like all the people that have worked in that lightweight division, that it just doesn't fucking work sense. like that. I don't think it does. I think that's a fucking makes terrible more sense fight. than Cejudo coming out of retirement. Oh yeah, yeah, retirement. No. Yeah, well, I'm not mad about that, as I'll explain when we're talking about UFC 280 and what happened and what could happen. Make that fight. I'm stoked. Fuck no. Let's see. Fair enough. What do you reckon, Drew? Fuck Cejudo, though. I hate that. Dude. Yeah, no. just fucking in general, regardless of whether he gets the fight or not. Yeah. Like, I probably won't pay to watch it. No. Nah. Like, they're just going to fucking cuddle each other for 25 minutes. Someone might get choked out. Hopefully, Aljo just does the same thing to him that he did to Dillashaw on the weekend. Just sits on top of him, beats his fucking stupid spike yeah, Sterling's, in his head. Sterling's big. Like, because TJ's not real small for that weight class and Sterling made him look small. Sterling was huge on the weight Massive, class. dude. Massive. I don't reckon, like, there's probably a potential that he could start going up at some point in time. So who knows, like, the size of the pup? Yeah. <laughs> like, the fuck out of here. What? I hate that. Um. <laughs> okay, I get that wrestling's like an aspect of UFC, but it's not something I want to sit there and watch a whole fucking fight of. Yeah, you don't want to watch yeah. two wrestlers. Have a wrestling match. Yeah. Like, if you want to watch that, you can go to UFC Fight Pass, go into a wrestling event, and just watch it. Yeah, I mean, like, I want to see people get punched. Like, yeah, exactly. Be cool if some cunt gets, like, choked out mad, like, but, like, I want to see fucking punches. Mm-hmm. It's a fight. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not going to pay, like, 60 bucks to watch, like, two cunts fucking roll around on the floor like two Pisons fucking. Nah, fuck that. So, who don't might realize that. He's probably going to have the disadvantage in size and strength, so he might try to keep it on the feet because he doesn't have the worst striking. Like he kept a standing with um, Demetrius Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Which is like DJ's no fucking. He's no slouch. He's like over in one fighting Muay Thai champions and shit. Yeah, like yeah. oh, we'll do a round of Muay Thai, a round of MMA, a round of Muay Thai. That's the what they're doing. Yeah, and he just beat some like legendary champion in that. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he. I think he beat him in the MMA side of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not too sure. Yeah, he lasted the first round in Muay Thai and then chucked yeah. him out. But that's what I mean. Like, so Hudo lasted against that. So he's he's okay on the feet, but just like grow up. Literally grow up. Yeah. Up. <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But um uh we'll move into a little UFC. What the fuck is going on this episode, man? My phone's been using the camera now, so... My phone's there, it's not ringing. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yep. Yep. No, yeah, it was just like a joke. I didn't... Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Alright, bye. Franklin, uh... I'm really sorry about everything I've ever done. Um, sorry about that, boys. Let's move on here. Uh, we're gonna go into the UFC 280 breakdown. Um, I mean, we've got to start it off with Yarn versus O'Malley. Really, well, we've got to start it off with the fact that once again we have a fight companion for this. We do these three fights that are up on the YouTube YouTube exclusive. If you'd like to get we on do. there and have a watch. We woke up early. Uh, Super up. early. We weren't even sure you were going to wake up. Well, is the Griff awake? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I woke up with like five minutes to get ready. Um, I got it done though. Oh, yeah. Got the job done. Got ready. 
done it for the people. And we got there like pretty much right as they were uh, walking, which was sick. Um, Yarn versus O'Malley. A lot of people think Yarn got robbed. No. I, I don't think it was a robbery. Like, we'd, like it's not like a Gabe Rosado, like in his last fight. Like, oh, God. you know, clearly, clearly he took every round and they just robbed him fucking in front of everyone. Um, pretty close contested fight. I can see how they scored it for Yarn. Like, I can yeah, see how people wanted and... to, but it was... Yeah, rounds one and three definitely went to O'Malley. Like, well, as I well, said, significant strikes were higher for O'Malley yeah. through round one and three. Yeah, and as I said to you yesterday, like, I would not have been disappointed if Yarn had his, oh, like, his hand raised. No, yeah. not at all. Like, I said that as soon as it finished. I was like, oh, yeah, that could have went either way type thing. Mm-hmm. But I feel like judges take into consideration what you do with your takedowns. And I don't think a lot of people... I've seen fighters come out and be like, no, you got robbed. Like, you're a fighter. You should understand what the judges are looking at, what the judges are looking for. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're not looking for, oh, yeah, he nearly got that takedown. Like, he nearly did something with it. They're looking for you to be dominant from that takedown. They're looking Mm -hmm. for you to gain a position from it. Like, it's it's not a takedown if you have O'Malley sitting on his ass and he just gets back up. Yeah, exactly. So It doesn't count for anything. No. I've probably seen three takedowns that Yarn done something with. And even then, it wasn't much. It, it wasn't much. O'Malley showed, yeah, good takedown defense. I, I've been saying it for a while that his ground game's underrated. And mm-hmm. I feel like he showed that. He got back to his feet pretty easily, pretty consistently. And fuck, man, them two on their feet was a sick fucking fight. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, they can run that fight back if they want. I'll, oh, have, they I'll happily watch it again. Right, I'll, yeah, that's like, like another fight I'll watch whenever <laughs> they have on. I'll be like, oh, fuck, how are they going to do it this time? But but give me five rounds. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like that's they're going to have to next time. I reckon what we are talking about just before with uh, Cejudo coming to fight Sterling, I reckon that's just because they know that like O'Malley is not not ready for Sterling. Like It's just not a fight that he comes away with a win. Yeah. And, I mean, like, they've been trying to, like, grow O'Malley, like, kind of bit by bit, just so to not, like, have him derailed type thing. Mm-hmm. Even his loss against Cheeto wasn't kind of like, oh, yeah, he's, his leg got fucked up. Yeah, so exactly. yeah it's controversial. Just, yeah, kind of yeah. question mark around that. Whereas now it's just like, okay, now he's, like, in the fucking, he's ranked number one. Yeah. So, yeah. I reckon it's a smart thing for the USA to get Cejudo in. And I think the fight to make is honestly Sandhagen versus O'Malley for for the shot at the title. Right. Um, Where's Sandhagen ranked? Third or okay. second? Probably third now because you got to imagine that Jan just dropped down one. Yeah. That's a fucking fight. That is the fucking fight. I don't care if it's fucking at three o'clock in the morning. I'm watching that shit. Yeah. Did O'Malley rematch Cheeto at all? Nah, nah. I was Could talking, they make that? Yeah, yeah. Or, I think I was talking to you about that this morning potentially. At no. some point, me and you were talking about the, that. No, fight. I do remember that conversation. Um, I feel like that's a fight that they could make just for O'Malley to kind of get the blemish off his yeah. UFC record type thing, just to be like, you Cheeto's know, still top ten, isn't he? Yeah, and Cheeto's out there doing work too. Yeah. Like he beat Dom Cruz by a head kick. Oh, yeah, that was a brutal knockout, eh? Yeah, I mean, Dom Cruz does this stupid shit where he leans really lean, yeah. right side. I mean, it works until yeah, oh. you've got six fights of tape of it and like you can just watch it and be like oh yeah he does that yeah but um i think that's the fight to make o'malley versus sandhagen yeah it'd be a definite fight because sandhagen's been working his way back up to another title shot um he's only lost against dillashaw and yarn mm-hmm. so i mean what better fight to make than that i don't know where yarn goes from this really I'd watch like a Yarn Sterling three. Yeah, definitely. Do you rate Sandhagen's ground game at all? Mm, it's about it's probably on par with O'Malley's, to be fair. Oh right. It's yeah. pretty they're pretty both underrated in my opinion. Like they obviously beat, they work hard towards it. If he beat O'Malley uh, How do you see the Sterling fight going for Sandhagen? Sterling's already beat Sandhagen by re naked choke in the Ooh. first. Not that long ago either. Oh, right. Like a while ago, but not that long ago. He's worked his way back from there. I see Sterling just, if he's able to like get him on the ground and control him, I see him beating everyone in that division. I don't think anyone's got like a real high level ground game other yeah, than him. Yeah. But Sandhagen's pretty lanky. O'Malley's pretty lanky. They might be able to keep uh, Sterling at range and flip him early. 
Yeah, because he's striking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, we have evidence on the weekend. Yeah, we'll move into that. Um, but I mean, did, what do you boys think about the decision? It's like it could have went either way. No, I'm happy with that. Like you said, I, no, yeah, like we both said, as we mentioned before, like I, I wouldn't have cared if Young got his hand raised. No, no. But I, you know, I am under the assumption that O'Malley won rounds yeah. one and three, which is enough to get in the fight. Well, O'Malley came out, I uh, watched his post fight interview yep. and they were like oh do you think you did enough to get it done he's like i don't know i've got to go watch it and then he done the post fight press conference and he said the same thing he's like i haven't watched it but i've looked at like significant strikes i've looked at this like i think you know it could have went either way and i wouldn't have been upset if i lost yeah but i'm stoked i won so yeah i feel like he pretty much fucking nailed it there it could have went either way mm-hmm. it wasn't fucking like a gay risotto incident where he just got fucking robbed on fucking live tv yeah exactly um, Sterling versus TJ. Apparently, TJ had shoulder injuries coming into the fight. I seen something about this like yesterday or something like that. Apparently, yeah. he blew his shoulder out in April of yeah. last year. Wait, this year? What the? What the? Fucking! I completely lost track of time there. It's October, so apparently he blew his shoulder out in April and it hasn't been good since then. And he told the ref before the fight that if his shoulder dislocates, which probably will, just let him put it back in and keep fighting. I mean, I did see at the end of the first round, he was like saying something to the ref it was about his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, you could tell something was off Sterling with it. Sterling threw he him was... to the ground at one point, and he landed awkwardly in his shoulder, which was already, yeah, you know. Yeah, he was like off. There was one point at the ground where Sterling was on top of him, and you could like see him like wincing. Like you could see it on his face. Like yep. he was in pain. Yeah. I mean, he had a long time to kind of rest. Like he didn't just have to be hard in camp for why your shoulder's fucked. I mean,. Eric, you just said six months ago, my shoulder's fucked. I won't be ready for the fight. Yeah, yeah. give it give it an extra fucking six weeks because that's what it would be. You'd fucking have it popped back in and you wouldn't be able to use it for six weeks or some shit. You can imagine. Yeah, I guess about six to 12, depending on how bad. Yeah, there you go. I've yeah, never like, popped a shoulder out, but... I popped mine out when I was a bit younger. Yeah. Playing footy. So I was pretty close, though. So, yeah, you'd just have to fucking have it popped in, rest it so, like, it settles in the joint again, really. Yeah. And then you got to, like, do, like, fucking exercise and shit with like them rubber bands and that like you come to your bedroom door and shit and you gotta do yeah, like, like yeah. exercises to build the Strength muscle and shit that. like all that back up in your shoulder yeah so, i mean like, he, even then you like it was six months ago so even then yeah. if you did like pop it then you would have had probably say about 12 weeks yeah where it wouldn't have been able to use it so he's only had 12 weeks with a good shoulder yeah yeah that's true like and you meant to be like rehabbing it but he wouldn't have been like rehabbing it or nothing, obviously. Yeah, he would have just been straight, into straight back, like straight into camp. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I guess he probably didn't want to lose his shot. Like, he, like he's pretty lucky to get a shot after. I feel like he's lost some of his last fights, and the fight against Sandhagen was pretty close. But man, fuck, he showed fucking toughness. Like you could tell. Like yeah, the first time he was down on the ground was apparently when it popped out the first time, and yeah, you could see like. Rumi said straight away on the companion, like, fuck it. It looks like he's, like, in pain. Yeah, he looked like he was hurt. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, TJ lost in the second round, I think it was. Yeah, second round, TKO. Second round. I, I originally said this is terrible because this is going to set up O'Malley versus Sterling, and that's a terrible fight for O'Malley. But I'm stoked that that's not the way it's looking like it's going to go. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'll, I'll watch... Going. Yeah, I'll watch the Hudo get fucking molested for fucking five Yeah, because Dana seems rounds. to be under the same impression as you that O'Malley's not quite ready for the shot yet. No, nah, he's not. He's not. Like, he just jumped from not ranked in the top 10 to number one. Wait, would they have him at like 11th or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think 11th or 12th. And Crazy. yeah, he just jumped the whole fucking division. But, um, yeah, O'Malley's got the skills and shit to kind of do it. Uh... Sterling beats O'Malley. Sterling beats Sanhagen at the moment until like someone figures out. He definitely beats Cejudo. I think yeah, I think his size and strength's too much for Cejudo. He just fucking ragdolls him. Yeah. Um, I fucking hope so. Then Cejudo can just fuck off. Yeah. Into obscurity. I mean, I'm not a big Cejudo fan, so yeah, as long as he just gets his dick twisted, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, main event. Yeah. Fucking. What a roller coaster that oh, motherfucker yeah. so was. No. Um, it was a very interesting fight. Islam got the win. Uh, second round. What kind of choke was that? Arm triangle. Right. No, arm. Um, yeah. Arm and 
I'm I'm an or something. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm an an Um, not like the easiest submission to get because most people, as soon as you've got that arm and then neck wrapped up, they know they just got to keep you to that side and you can't yeah. do anything. But um, yeah, Islam just showed elite level wrestling really. Um, I don't know what that was by Charles that got him into that situation. Yeah, he, that's it. I think at one moment turned into a Brazilian ballerina and tried to do some hop and that was, was just like, oh, yeah, just, <laughs> it was weird. It was like a, what did you call it? Like an awkward, like jumping knee I sort of. I think he went for a knee, but then Islam kind of stepped in, but not low, but kind of stepped towards it. So he went to throw a punch from it and Islam just like waited till he landed, clipped him with a nice right, dropped him. Pretty much got on top and just smothered him. Yeah, that's it. Because the punch rocked him enough that he didn't really have his senses to defend himself yeah. on the ground. Yeah, I yeah. think like, I think like a comment too. It was like a lot of people, like Islam done like the right thing. A lot of people yeah. like hit Charles and tag him, and then like they let him rec- like they let him get back up. Yeah, because yeah. they don't want to be on the ground with him. But yeah. like that's the time to jump on the ground with him when yeah. he's like dazed and he doesn't have like his fucking wits about him properly. Yeah, well, but, um, like Islam done like the right thing and like. As we said to each other, like after the fight, like he fell into that, like he didn't like necessarily fall into the position, but he went to the ground with the intent of yeah. getting to that position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't like a oh fuck, I'm just gonna jump on him and yeah, like try to ground and pound him instantly. Yeah, like Islam's because everybody else is a good striker that he'd been tagged by. Sorry, yeah. like put him on the ground. They never tried to fucking jump on and just fucking choke him out. No, fuck no, they didn't. It was there, like it was pretty evenly matched on the ground. To be fair, like yeah, in really the first cool. round. Uh, Charles pulled guard relatively early, probably a minute in. Uh, pulled guard, and it was just like a, a mismatch, essentially. Not a mismatch, but just like a stalemate. Yeah. Like, it was just, they were stuck in full guard. Charles was trying to throw shit up at Islam. Islam knew what was coming and would just hold his position, really. Uh, they got back to their feet. Uh, Islam landed like a trip, ended up in a bit of a better position and did a bit of ground and pound from there. But then, yeah, stood up. Came back out for the second round and yeah, it was on the feet for most of the second round until that ballerina dance. I don't know. Yeah, yeah never was. never got to see Charles in like a dominant position on the ground. Like no. he, was, he was never on top. There was never no, one no. point where he was like, fuck. He was. It was always fucking Islam on top. Mm-hmm. He was throwing up like a lot of submissions, but yeah, Islam just looked like he was a step ahead. Just knew, like looked composed, but like you've got to be like you're training with Khabib and you know them that high like. Yeah, it's like that Dagestani wrestling. wrestling. Like they're on the ground, but they still like stay compact. Yeah, it's like it's nuts, it's man. weird. Like they still stay like they stay real tight, but they're still able to like manipulate the person to yeah. where they want them to go. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fucking crazy. Um, that set up a fight for Perth with Alexander Volkanovsky. That's a terrible fucking fight for him. I, anyone that's just like that's mad, no. It's a terrible like fight for him. It's a good fight for fans. It's a mm, like I would have enjoyed a Charles fight more because like Charles versus. Vol- I think the thinking Vol- yeah, behind yeah, that in yeah. Dana's right. eyes is that there's a. It's more of a money fight if you hey get Volkanovski to do it right now. There isn't yeah. really anybody that Volkanovski can fight in the featherweight division that's worth a pay per view. No. And there's a Rio de Janeiro card coming up sometime early next year, which will probably have Charles headlining. I would assume. Yeah, he didn't take too much damage. He'd probably be right to come back pretty soon. Mm-hmm. I mean... But that means Islam's going to turn around. Because what's... Hang on, we've got 282s in December, 283s in January, so February, whatever the fuck it was. February something. Yeah, I can't remember the date, but... I yeah, don't I have a date. date. I, think it was like, I think it was like somewhere around the 20th or something like that. Yeah, I think. so it's in like the middle of February in Perth. Yeah. So it's going to be hot as fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, I just don't like that fight for Volk. No, I don't either, man. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, fuck. It's like Islam is literally just gonna maul him to the ground. Well, like, look how strong Islam was against Charles. Like, that's not good against Volk, who's you know <laughs> naturally probably walks around natural at that way. He Islam, like when he was in the cage. No, nah. like oh Volkanovski, he's like, where is he? I I have I not see this small guy. Where is he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Volk's not that small though. Like. Next to Islam, he's like they like the same kind of height, ish. But I'm guessing Volk probably had like shoes on for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like but like boosters. Like he probably had like Mayweather fucking booster uh, shoes. They had on. like and, bigger shoes on. 
And yeah, it, yeah. Easily and was barefoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like, what I mean. Like, no shoe at all. Yeah. I feel like that's just, that's not good for Bo. Yeah, because, uh, like, I get what he's trying to do. Not, his name's not stupid enough to even, like, try and, like, the reason that he was trying to strike with Charles is because they probably have about the same striking proficiency, I would say. He's not going to mm. bother doing that with somebody like Volkanovski. It's going to yeah, be no. exactly like Jamea versus Holland. He's going to come out, go for a takedown, and just hold him on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going to, it's going to be, like, less consequences if he, like, slips up and doesn't capture the takedown perfectly. Like, if you go for a takedown against Charles and you don't lock it in perfect, you're fucked. Yeah. Like, he's going to have your back or he's going to have a guillotine or it's just not going to be good. Whereas, I, th- I just don't see Volk being able to, like, threaten Islam anywhere near the amount that Charles was able to. And he beat Charles. Yeah. So, the interesting shit ahead. Um, my predictions for... But, it, I don't know, there's also, like, small points of, like, Charles was completely happy to invite Islam into those situations, whereas Volkanovski's going to fight tooth and nail to not, not be, on be the in them. ground. I mean... So it is a little bit of a different situation. Like, Volk's got good submission defense. Like, he, he got caught in two bad spots by Ortega, mm. and Ortega is pretty fucking high level. And not only submission defense, submission resistance. Like, his yeah. head was about as red as this fucking Coke can. Yeah, I do. When uh, Ortega Sorry. had that guillotine locked yeah, like, in. There was like, Said he heard him gurgling. Yeah, there was two yeah. times, like, Volk was nearly out. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anybody else would have been. That's huge resistance. Um, I feel like Islam's a lot stronger and probably a lot better than Ortega. So I feel like he just squeezes his little yeah. fucking head off. Yeah, and like but, it's like the same thing, like that Dagestani wrestling. Like Habib just seemed to have like an insane grip strength. Yeah, yeah. But apparently they, apparently their like strength is just like out of this fucking world. Yeah, like once they grab hold of you, you're not getting away. Yeah. I feel like Dustin Poirier spoke about it in an interview once. He was like, yeah, it's fucking out of this world how fucking strong he is. Like, as soon as he got a hold of me, I was like, holy fuck. Which is, uh, yeah, that explains why they can just control people like that. And apparently, yeah, this is Khabib 2.0, so. Mm. Uh, the, yeah, there's some cool shit to come out of this, I guess. Like, my predictions are fights that we will see because of all this. San Hagen O'Malley, that'll happen. Yeah. Uh, that'll be like title contention fight. It'll happen maybe around the same time that Cejudo and Sterling happen. And then it'll be the winner of that fight versus the winner of that fight. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just see Islam running through Volk. Yeah, it's most likely going to happen like that. Yeah. I don't see anyone really... It's the same... It, it, doing too great against It's the Islam. same... Like, everyone's like, oh, you know, he's going to do this and he's going to do that kind of thing. But it, the the vision works out exactly the same for me. It was the same before with Charles. Because you have all of these strikers underneath him. Mm. And it's the same concept of, yeah, they might be able to, like, tag him and get him on the ground. But once it's on the ground, it's fucking game over. Yeah. Same thing with Islam. Like, yeah. he's got a suspect chin. He's got, like, the likes of Gagey, Poirier, Chandler kind of thing all coming up the ranks underneath him. They might tag him. They might drop him to the ground. But he's just going to grab their fucking neck when they do. Yeah. Well, apparently, um, the only person that ever came close to beating Khabib was Poirier when he got him in that guillotine. So that really? Be, yeah, that could be something. You know, if uh, Poirier comes out and beats Chandler, that could be a fun fight to watch. I would say that Islam's not as strong as Khabib. No, he doesn't look as strong. Like, he doesn't look... And he's nowhere near his experience. Like, Khabib had 29 fights by the time he retired. Mm-hmm. Uh, Islam's working towards that. I feel like he's maybe like 20... Fights, 22 fights. Something like that. But not like, you know, in the UFC and shit like that. That That's a fight that I think will happen eventually. It's Poirier versus his, um, yeah, Islam. Yep. Chandler versus Islam is a fun fight too, though. So, yeah, I feel like whoever wins out of Poirier and Chandler will probably next for a title shot. In yeah, you would assume that. so. You'd think so. Um, Yeah, I don't feel like there's too much more to break down from 280. Yeah. I feel like we'll roll into uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of fights coming up this weekend. Alrighty, Loma. With. We're gonna we'll start off with Loma Ortiz. Um, I don't really know who Ortiz is. Yeah, neither do I. But he's rel- relatively young. Yep, young I, he, I don't even think he's had like twenty fights yet. Hmm. So he's undefeated. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, undefeated. I think uh, twelve knockouts or something like okay. that. Okay. Something like that. I think. So, you know, I think it's like eight, the way up. Yeah, I think it's like 18 fights or something like that he's had. That's okay. not bad. So not, like, a, not a bad record. Yeah, well, Lo- Loma, I think. 
Yeah, well, Loman's had 16, but yeah. like... Yeah, well, thousand he, amateurs. Yeah, he won like fucking the Olympic gold medal twice and like yeah. stayed in amateurs for years. That's what I mean. If you looked at Loma on paper, like his professional career on paper, you'd be like, what the fuck is this dude? Yeah. Can I get him out of here kind of thing? And then he would just, yeah. But you look at his like, master class. But you look at his pro record on paper, he's the yeah. fastest... Three weight. Mm. Three weight world champion in history, I think, mm-hmm. and fastest world champion too. Oh, I, think he, was, I think he won the world title in like his third or fourth he did, fight. He, did. he should have won it in like his. That. Oh, he would have won it in his second fight, but he fought some dirty fighter. Apparently, I watched a documentary yesterday. Like I don't know his name. His last know. name. I don't know what his first name is. Yeah, he like hit him with like forty something shots below the belt. Yeah, just fucking gave just, him the old Rodriguez. Just gave him, yeah, gave him the old hey doing there, mate. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I watched the documentary yesterday because I was like, alright. Like the Loma fight coming up. Yep. His angles are fucked. It's ridiculous. The footwork. Stupid. The footwork is nuts. Dude, it's just fucking stupid. Yeah, his dad is the mad scientist of all mad scientists. I mean. Yeah, pulled him, pulled him out of boxing or something. Yeah. At like the age of seven or maybe even younger. Yeah, I think it was six or seven. And just like pulled him out of boxing and just put him into like Ukrainian dancing yeah. for fucking like five years. Didn't, did not let him go near a boxing gym. It's nuts, hey. But um, I mean. Just crazy. Do you imagine if Loma had a kid? And then it's just that you've got like your grandpa Loma and Papa Loma just like training this psycho. Unbeatable. Yeah, because it's like you're going to learn from all of Loma's mistakes. Like, okay, you know, you probably stay in the amateurs for too long. We need to get you out, like, into the amateurs and out of them a bit sooner. Like, you're just going to have the perfect specimen of a boxer. Yeah, well, like the like Europeans and shit, they're, like, big on, like, amateur boxing. And, like, to them, the gold medal is, like, the epitome. Yeah. But yeah, you look at him and Yusik. They're, like... Yeah. They're, like, they're both gold medalists. Yeah. Like, the gold medal is just the epitome to them. Yeah. And then, like, it's like once they hit a certain age, it's like, okay, do pro boxing now and make money yeah. before you can't make money anymore. Yeah. Like, like Loma's record, something, like, ridiculous. It's like 300. Yeah. I think it's like 400 and something? 396 and 1. Was that Triple G's record? I'm sure. Sure. Like, in 400 gram or something. Yeah, I think Triple G's is something like that. Yeah. I think Loma's, yeah, Loma's was like 396 and 1. And, yeah, two Olympics. Yeah. And he came back and beat the guy that beat him. Yeah, twice. Yeah, once in amateurs, <laughs> once in pros or something. Like I mean, like, it's hard to ever bet against Loma. I mean... Well, we shouldn't be betting against him for this fight. No. This is just another tune-up fight, like, stage Maybe. kind of thing. Yeah, well, this this would be. I'm pretty sure Ortiz is with top rank. Yeah, he is. It's an in-house fight. And so, it, yeah. like and room for Bob to turn around and announce Loma and Haney. Bob's or practically already ele- announced Loma and Haney. It's like he's just waiting for this fight. Like he's practically just fed this young Ortiz kid to Loma. Yeah. Crazy, crazy things Pretty can much. happen. You know what I mean? Like this Ortiz kid can just come out and spark Loma. Like it's not impossible. Well, he could. He could. He could and come then, out and, and spark just like, him. But is a better in the mix, boys? What are you gonna fucking do? But I don't think like Loma with the chip on his shoulder, point to prove. Yeah. Wants all them belts. Wants that Haney fight. I think yeah, he wants his legacy to be the way he wants to see it before he fucking hangs the gloves up. Yeah, so I think he, I think he comes out. He's going to try to look, at, like, look to make a statement in this one. That's what he said when he was coming back. He's like, I want the belts. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I'd never really bet against Loma. I feel like he just beats, like, if Loma comes out switched on, not like weird how he kind of came out against Lopez, but if he comes out switched on and on his game plan from the fucking bell, who the fuck beats him? Well, he was injured, and he knew it still nearly won that fight. Mm. Yeah, well, he'd been... He's had surgery on his elbow, I think. Had it the day Had after. surgery the day before fucking the fight, and <laughs> just came out slinging all, didn't give a fuck. Had surgery on his shoulder literally the day after. Yeah. Yeah, but didn't he have something in the build-up to that fight as well? Like, he was already injured, and he had, like, some form of operation done. Actually, yeah, I think he might Yeah, be and then I think he went into that fight and, like, fucked it again, and then had to go get surgery again. Yeah, I, I did. I think he might have done it. He might have done something with his elbow the first time or something, like before the fight. Yeah, I think he might be right, actually. And then after it, he like had to go get fucking surgery again. But it yeah. was like his first fight after surgery. There was no like tune up, nothing. Just straight in with Lopez, who at that point was on a tear. Yeah, that's it. Like he was beating everybody. 
But I think actually, like, like Loma beating him injured and then Cambosis beating him after we've seen the beating that Haney has put on him for the last two fights, I don't think Lopez was ever shit. It was... He was guarded. He was guarded right. He was guarded right. I think. I don't think that night against Gambosis was sort of an off night too. Like I, he could have fought better than that if he didn't have his stupid fucking dad in the fucking corner. Yeah, probably. But my point is, I think that was corner and then in the crowd. Like, yeah, I think that was there. Like, all just went to their head. My point is, he was never good enough to beat Loma in the first place if Loma wasn't injured. No, if Loma if Loma started before round six. That's what I mean. Been, you can yeah, tell Loma, Lopez wins. Exactly. Well, I mean, he he beats Lopez. Like, Cambo- like fucking Loma would have just been on a tear and fucking ran through Cambosis. He would have been the next mandatory for the IBF. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you can just see something's off with Loma. Like, he doesn't, yeah, get going for six rounds. And then when he finally starts to get a bit of rhythm, it's already, like, too fucking far gone. Lopez, but exactly. But when he starts going, Lopez just doesn't know what to fucking do. Yeah, exactly. Like, if he had have started earlier instead of fucking just standing there in front of. Lopez and letting Lopez get off shots. Yeah. He would have won that fight. Yeah. Like he yeah. he was his own enemy. I think it was like coming off the surgery or whatever it was that was wrong with him. Like he didn't want to start too early. Yeah. And he just let the fight get away with him. Like get away from him. And yeah, then I think he thought he could pull it back. Yeah, and I think Lopez won like the last fight, which like the last round, sorry, which just fucked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like when Lopez fought Cambosis. When I was watch, when we were watching it, I was saying to you, Cambosis is doing like he was doing this weird thing. He was like jabbing, and then like after he jab, he was like expecting the right hand, so he was like ducking and like dipping right down to his right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like if Lopez was with his trainer and not being trained by his dad, the yeah, trainer would have pulled like the trainer would have pulled up on that straight away and said, as soon as you fucking, as soon as he throws something, throw the uppercut. Because he's leaning towards it. I said it to you in like the second round or something. I think it was. I was, yeah, like, if, I was like, if Cambosis keeps doing that, bro, he's going to sleep. Yeah. But like, I think having his dad there in the corner for that Cambosis fight did not help. No, not at all. Um, before you joined the team for him, we actually, well, it was like, you know, your, just before your first episode, we did have Senior on. We tried to like get his opinion on a few of the things that he was doing. In the hard interview, Ned. was in the interview. He wasn't. I mean, I think you see him leaving. Yeah, he was a bit Getting angry. Cars and shit. Like, he's not a problem. He was a bit angry on the way out. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, we tried to get his thoughts on, you know, being in the corner, being in the crowd. He just nonsense. Nonsense. Didn't want to buy of it. Nah, nonsense left and right. But I mean, I feel like we can all agree that Loma's going to win this fight. Yeah. And then, yeah, Loma Haney's a fun fight, man. Like, I don't think Haney can do his game plan against Loma. No. He's going to go try to clinch Loma. Loma's just going to be behind the motherfucker. Like, what are we, what are we doing? The only thing he has over Loma is reach. Yeah, yeah, he's got a big reach. But I feel like Loma's like probably he, fought enough people in his amateur career with long reaches where he knows how to negate it. Like, that, like that's what I, I was going to say. Like, he's got the reach, but I think, like, fucking uh, Loma just outdoes him with IQ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's a, like hey, as much of, like, a smart fighter as Haney is. Loma's just... Yeah, I think Loma's footwork allows him to outdo Haney. Yeah. 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 And he's just, like, been able to get in, get out, get around. Yeah. Like, sometimes he'll get in, just get out. Sometimes he'll get in, get around. Like, Loma's not going to be in front of you like George. No. Nah. Yeah, and, like, even, like, George was still able to tag him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. At points, like, Loma is going to tag him for sure. Yeah, 100%. It's just... And more to the point, the worst fight that I've seen Haney have, apart from the fact that he got... Like, he got clipped by Linares, but that was just a lucky combo by Linares. Haney got lucky. Or Haney got lazy, rather. Mm. The hardest fight that I've seen for Haney was against uh, probably the last fight that we're going to talk about, Jojo Diaz. I was about to say the same thing. That was a close fight, ball. man. It was. It really was. Some people even say that Diaz won the fight. Mm, I wouldn't go no, that far. No. I, mean, I don't like, think I watched that. Um, it wasn't, like, a super exciting fight, but it was, like, pretty much Haney trying to stick to his plan and Jojo getting inside and making it. A dirty fight. Like exactly. it was it was a good fun fight to watch though. Yeah, yeah. Which but I think Loma is more than capable of doing. Well, I feel like Haney struggled with JoJo's like consistent in like being inside and being able to fight inside yes. well. Whereas like, Loma's just gonna be inside landing like crisp shots too. Like he's not gonna be kind of winging shots in there. He's gonna be inside like oh, hit here, 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 here. And then I'll just be around here and I'll hit mm-hmm. here. The yeah, he has pass, this, this special this style lately of like he'll 
tends to feign a jab. He'll come in with short left and move around you until you react. And as soon as you react, he'll hit you with another left hook. It's very like next level. Like nobody can seem to figure it out. Hey, because they try and react. Like he throws the feint, he comes in short here, and they try and react him being here, but he's already moved around here. So they throw here and overextend themselves and just come straight back over the top with a short hook. He did it really well to uh that Nakatani dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like, yeah, we all agree Loma wins. It, yeah. That's a thing. It's like one thing versing a southpaw. But, like, it's another thing versing one who is technically good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck, like, well, Yusik, like, you sick to AJ. Yeah. Like, it's another thing versing a southpaw is not even supposed to be a southpaw. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, is that just, like, a Ukrainian thing? Like, no, no, you that's fight with your left Loma hand thing. now. He's actually, apparently, he's actually right-handed. Yeah, but he's just, like, just and mastered they're... both, or? Yeah. And I think oh, he doesn't switch it. He's right-handed, so he's more powerful hand and more powerful like yeah, is front. front. That's why you tend to see him move in and out with that. It's like uh, what Usyk does on steroids. He's got that real pendulum step, so you're constantly trying to time him coming in like this. This, this rhythm that he constantly changes because he'll stop, he'll bend, and he'll start moving to the side a little bit, and then yeah. creep towards him, and then he'll start bouncing again, and then you're like, well, what the fuck? What's he doing? I watched like yeah the Loman documentary yesterday, Arvo, and it was just like. Next level, man. Like, you understand why they call him the Matrix. Yeah. Like, it makes fucking total, complete fucking sense. And like you were saying before, just the interesting ways that they train, like, like his dad just, like, took him out of, you know, boxing for years, put him in Ukrainian dance, and the, just the interesting things. that they, they play tennis a lot. Like Yeah, have you seen, like, yeah. that weird thing they do with the number board? Yeah. Yeah, like, that's reaction wall. times. Yeah, on the wall, and they just got to, like, touch it and fucking, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, like, it's just shit you don't see people, like, doing anywhere else, like, in no. the world, like, in the fight game. Well, like, like, in this documentary, they had a thing about he, like, works real hard on, like, how long he can hold his breath, and his longest time is four and a half minutes. Yeah, it's all due to, like, your lung capacity. The more yeah. that you can hold, the longer your cardio lasts for kind of thing. Yeah, 100%. But, like, four and a half minutes. That's fucking crazy. Longer than a fucking round. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so he could literally, like, I mean, he's probably not capable of it, but he'd be really, he could probably fight me without breathing. Yeah. And just <laughs> wouldn't need to probably actually fight all break fucking a breath. three of us without taking a fucking breath. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah I just gotta, the round, I just got to <laughs> finish the first two quick and then I can just fuck around with the last one for a bit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're sort of all, all in agreement there. He's probably going to get that done. I think yeah. we're all in agreement that one is probably the one dude that doesn't get called out on the podcast ever. No, God, no. no. I gotta, I gotta, he'll stop him. Yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel like he'll come out and get a quick fucking finish going. But you never know. This Ortiz kid might come out and just fucking shock the world. Who fucking knows, man? Know. Yeah, I'll say somewhere mid to late. Yep. Yeah. He'll want to put not, on a bit of a show. Not too early. Mm. Bit of a show, you reckon? Like, fucking a little bit of a fucking let people know what they're getting ready for. Yeah, like, and, like, the other kids, like, the other fellow, he's got a point to prove. Yeah. Like, you're going in with Loma, you're not going in there to, well, a lot of people do go in there to lay down, but, yeah, like, if you're a young kid, you're not going in there to outbox Loma. You're going in yeah. there to fucking... You're going in there to try and stop him. Yeah, right. yeah. But you know you're not going to outbox Loma. Um, so it could be interesting. Speaking of pieces of shit, okay. Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva. Uh, I, I don't really know how to... Fight me. Well, yeah, I mean, Jake, you see the YouTube comments. We know you see them. Yeah. Oh, someone does. Oh, someone sees them. Because they're getting liked. Uh-huh. Um... I mean, good on Jake Paul for stepping up. Still not fighting a fucking boxer. He's fighting someone that's had two boxing fights lately and then had boxing fights previously in his career. Yeah. An aged MMA fighter once again, even though he said, I'm going to stop fighting aged MMA fighters. I mean, fights possibly the greatest aged MMA Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> that I, is I'm going to stop. Any differences in this. I'm going to stop fighting randomly, random aged MMA fighters. I'm going to fight the aged MMA fighter. Yeah. I just hope Silver comes out and just fucking crane kicks this motherfucker and just like fuck boxing. Yeah, that's it. Wind that fucking clock back. I don't think Silver needs money, bro. No. Nah. Surely not. Come out and fucking do what you did to fucking Belfort and just front kick his fucking teeth out. That'd be fucking Dude. hilarious, man. Yeah, but um, just like full shapes up and fucking just leans back and hey dude. I'm trying to um recreate that uh Forrest Griffin knockout. Oh, just like where he's like, like yeah. where he's like backpedaling, like yeah. Griffin's coming forward, oh, like, yeah. rolling combos, he's just backpedaling back one, just like 
throws the laziest, like, yeah. the laziest arm at there right on the chin, fucking Forrest Griffin. Just goes, right <laughs> on the button. Straight down. Yeah. I'd love to see that. That'd be fucking great. I, I hate to say it as, like, the, like... Well, don't. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, but i got to be, like, i got to call it straight down the middle. I see Paul winning. I don't see Paul being probably able to knock Silver out. I feel like Silver's probably a bit too good, but I feel yeah. like Paul's probably going to be too big, too strong. He's going to bully him. Too physical. Yeah. yeah. He's just going to push him around. A little bit. Um, I don't want that to happen. I don't think anyone wants that to fucking happen, that, you know, unless they're a Paul Dick Ryder. Mm. But I see it going that way. I'd love to see Silver just come out and fucking, you know, have some slick head movement, not get hit, and just, you know, teach the boy a fucking lesson. Oh, it'd be great to see him just frustrate the fuck out of him. Uh, yeah, I don't see it going that way. I see no. Paul by decision. What is that, eight rounds? I think it's eight rounds, yeah. I think so. Yeah, probably, yeah, Paul by decision. I don't see Silver getting tired. I don't see Paul getting tired. We'll get, like, yeah. The thing I don't hate about Paul, and, like, I just hate on these other fucking wankers, is, like, he's, like, put his whole life into it. And, like, as, as much of a fuckwit as he is, like, that's what he just fucking wants to fucking do. So fucking be it. Like, he's not... Being like these other wankers who aren't even training for fights and they're just going out and getting fucking knocked out and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah no. Nah, it's good on him for having a go, but like, yeah. fuck, there comes a point where like... you got to fight a boxer. Yeah, yeah, stop fighting these fucking aged people who like literally would have killed you within about three seconds if yeah. they were anywhere near their prime. Well, I mean, yeah. if you put like, him against Askren, Woodley, or Silver in an MMA fight at their age now, they kill him. Yeah, all yeah, of them by murder. Kill him, and it's like you know, you start getting so excited. Cause who's that? Hussey? But even Woodley, like five, six years ago, that's not his name. Hussey. That's his name, but I don't think you get excited about that. No, no, Hussey. I'm not excited Hussey. about that. But Hussey. like Rockman, yeah, you like you know what I mean. Like it's it starts to get to fury, and you're like, oh, okay, this like he could be fighting someone that's trained boxing. Yeah, exactly. And then that falls in falls out. Then you're like, yeah, that Hus Hussey guy. You're like, okay, at least he's fighting someone that trains boxing and is not coming from. Having weird kickboxing and fucking shit. Yeah, exactly. So you're like, okay, and then that like falls through, and it's like, oh, surely he's like have a boxer that's like, you know, got a few fights on the record. Fuck Innocent Silver, you're like, fuck's sake, man. Like, um, I mean, like props to him for picking Silver out of everyone. But like, still probably his most dangerous fight that he's taken. Yeah, I guess. I guess who's next for Paul too? I fucking guarantee it. Me. Diaz. I guarantee he'll. Duck Mate. the boys, bro. He'll keep, <laughs> he'll keep ducking the boys for him. He'll keep ducking the boys and he'll fight Diaz next. Which I, I reckon that'll be the fight we see next after Silver. We'll see Diaz probably get called out after that. Diaz is just like, wants money and shit. Like, oh, yeah. Fucking. I mean, will we ever see Paul fight a boxer? Who fucking knows, man? He, oh, likes, fucking... To, he likes to say that he's going to win a belt. Like, a belt. Yeah, so well, you gotta you're going to have to box fight at somebody him. eventually. Yeah, Mauricio is going to make him one. Yeah, probably. Well, but he made his own belt. You know that colourful belt he had at the first Woodley press conference? Yeah. He was like the most valuable fighter yeah. or something. He's got his own belt, bro. Fucking, fucking idiot. Belt. Jake Paul just brings his own belt. Like, I love how he was like the most valuable fighter, but like Canelo literally got paid more than you. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> dude. You were not him. the most valuable. He's kind of like, oh, I'll beat Canelo in two years. Dude, you're fucking doing a terrible way of working towards it by fighting You won't beat Canelo old in man. 20 years. I feel like Paul's best chance is Probably fighting Canelo's daughter, and I still reckon he gets his ass kicked. Yeah, probably. Because you know she's probably eating that Mexican horse meat, and she's throwing Canelo combos. And like Jake's not ready for that shit, bro. Um, I feel like he beats uh, Silver. I feel like that's just, you know, a thing that's probably going to happen. Yeah, once again, he's probably just too physical for him. But fuck, yeah. it'd be great to see Silver just make him look stupid. I mean, if fucking if there's ever a time for that dude to fucking bring the old back from the future fucking Macra fucking car back, it's now <laughs> chuck silver in the bad boy and take him on back um marty mcfly the guy from that movie is he like something wrong with him now or parkinson's okay guys i hadn't seen anything about him since that movie probably yeah and then just like a thing came up the other day and i was like what the fuck am i watching <laughs> okay that makes sense though um rest in peace bernie sanders um do you see going to decision yeah, probably, to be honest. Like I said, I don't think, like it's going to be physical, but I don't think that Paul has enough proficiency to actually land enough shots to knock him out. No. I reckon he just like like lands what he can kind of thing and then just lays on him for the rest of it. Yeah, Silver's not going to be there. 
like yeah, wood he would was. Get, yeah. get knocked out. Unless Silver like starts any to get of the others it. have. The Silver will like kind of like invite him into the corner and try to do like weird shit where he doesn't have his hands up. And like, Silver's done it in the USC. He did it against fucking Tito. Yeah. For her f- fair enough, fighting Tito is like fighting a fucking paddle pop stick. Like it's not that fucking hard of a fight, <laughs> really. Um, yeah. I'm kind of excited for this. I see Paul like winning, but fuck, I'm not cheering for the cunt. Nah, no, no, I will never cheer for Paul. I'll give him his props, like yeah, fuck. Oh yeah, respect, respect someone better, and respect you like to you for getting in there and shit. But yeah, that's it. Um, fight for me, for any of us, really. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, you and your brother, you dog. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I'll fight if if Logan wins the WWE title. I'm going to the WWE boy. <laughs> uh, we got the hook up. Yeah, we do too, don't we? Hit up Jr. and be like, get us in there, boss. It broke him in half. <laughs> it broke him in half. Um, what are you thinking? I just want the puppies. <laughs> <laughs> loved the puppies, eh? Just loved them. The puppies, JR, the puppies. <laughs> oh, fuck. He got one dude that just loves barbecue sauce, and this other one just, just wants puppies. <laughs> like, you're a fuck about what, like, what wrestling. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Um, Taylor versus... I can know. True. That's a word. There's just a that, jumble of letters. That is word. Um, yeah, I was uh, going to say like ha- Karabajal. The Badger. Harbahal. Oh, the Badger. So we've got um, Taylor, Eddie Taylor. Taylor versus the Badger. Not the Badger you're thinking of, ladies and gentlemen. Taylor versus Carbonara or something. Carbonara? Yeah, we've got the <laughs> Carbonara pasta. I mean, so we've got uh, Taylor versus the Carbonara pasta. Um, I mean, he's going to have a feed. <laughs> I mean, she's she's earned it. She's earned it. Um, this fight's uh back in Ireland, oh. so a bit of a homecoming for Taylor here. Bit of a homecoming. I made a call during the week, which I can't remember who to. I think it might have been you. I reckon she retires after this. Yeah, I feel like we're talking about that uh, after the after the Sunday. Um, Thirty six. I mean, fucking get them dubs and just walk off into the sunset. She's arguably, You've earned it. Arguably fought her hardest competition in Serrano. I feel like they Brim. may run that fight back. Did she yeah, fight with Serrano's Serrano. sister previously down the line? What? what? Taylor. She's fought like another Serrano. This is the general question. Yeah, it's 100% legit. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know what was going on. Well, what you might know. I asked, um, uh, he's, she's fought like another Serrano earlier on. If you go to the zone, um, let's just take a moment, boys, to just appreciate Eddie Hearn and the zone. I mean, the Ed one true promoter thank you mr Crazy eddie head. um thank you and love us mr eddie um yeah i went back and flicked through his own because i figured i better get some type of research about me for the boxing segment so i watched some katie taylor fights and i watched the serrano fight may i just say what a fucking fight great fight maybe one of the best i've seen 100 yeah, percent. maybe one of the best i've fucking seen i don't give a fuck if it's male female whatever Maybe one of the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was like, I went back. I was like, oh, I'll go watch her, like her earlier shit. And it's like the first fight on it is just like another Serrano with like real short hair, looks a bit smaller than like the the main one. Oh, all right, no, I, could be, yeah. She I mean, could have. I, I'm not sure though. I okay. hadn't really paid much attention to that. Well, I mean, What's regardless, I feel like sport? I feel like Taylor beats a packet of pasta every day of the week. Oh, um, yeah. Carbonara destroys a bowl. Of carbonara feast. I mean, she probably breaks a sweat because how big is this bowl? Like, you know, how, what what weight does Taylor fight at? Uh, 135. I mean, 135 pounds of fucking carbonara. <laughs> that's a lot of pasta. That's, a, is that's a, a hell of a lot of pasta. So Pretty sweaty afterwards. Um, it's like punching back. Katie, if you need some help uh, eating pasta, bring a spare, spare fork. Um, hit your boys up. We'll be there. We'll be there. Um, Podge, are you going to make it to the fights? Probably should, bro. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a Taylor fan because I know he's like a boxing fan. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Podge, if you're, when you get to this point, just let us know if you're a fan or not. I mean, Taylor's got to win, right? You would think so. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't even know who this pick she's fighting is. Yeah, I've I've heard the name vaguely before kind of thing, but it's not like a... You see it on like Pack the Pass room. Like I said, I think this is more of just like a homecoming fight for her after the, like the Serrano fight. You reckon they'll run that fight back? I think so. I think they might. Because it was like so closely contested and... Yeah, it was just a great fight as well. Like it's... Yeah. There's no reason not to run it back. 
I mean, I feel like it's it was like probably one of Katie's more competitive fights. Yeah, hard. Yeah, if like, we're gonna do it in America, why not fucking why not have Taylor and Fields maybe on the same card? Wait, that'd be exactly. Yeah. That'd be fucking impressive. And Ned, Ned knows how I feel about Katie Taylor. Yeah. Not good. Oh, bro, just praise that woman. She's fucking... She's a G. Like, she is. Hard. She is the reason why women's boxing is in the Olympics. Yeah. They li- they literally, like, took her and somebody else to, like, America to some, like, fucking gym where they had, like, the Olympic, like, commissions, like, sitting there. And made her box in front of them, and then they went, yeah, okay, women's boxing can be at the Olympics. Yeah. Well, shout out to uh, Katie Taylor. Like, she's fucking, she's OG. She is, mm. like, slick. I haven't watched many of her fights before the weekend, and, like, I caught a couple on um, DAZN. Next level, man. That's why when you were, like, you watching these fights on DAZN? Like, it's not the Taylor fight, is it? You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, shit, man. I just stopped doing whatever the fuck I was doing, that's for sure. Yeah, I was just, like, sitting there, I was, like, started flicking through my phone, and I was like, oh, I wonder if there's anything on DAZN. Then I seen it. I was like, "Oh fuck! What if the boys are watching this?" And then it was like over before I knew it. I was like, "Oh, yeah, who, who did he fight? It was Lara versus uh, oh fuck it. somebody?" Yeah. Interesting. He came out after the fight and he said, "Like, I still have beef with Josh Warrington. I want to end his career." Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. he he beat Warrington and then they done the rematch and had a head clash. Yeah. And the fight went two. Oh, and okay. the fight went two rounds and it got like called off and everyone was saying that he like. Luke, that when he beat Warrington for the title, knocked him out. Everyone, yeah, but everyone was saying, like, everyone was saying it was just like a fluke. I mean, like, you know, similar to what happened with AJ Ruiz type yeah, thing. Like, yeah. everyone was like, oh, he shouldn't have won that. And then he was coming back with like a point to prove and, yeah, had a head clash and I got called off. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, um, I see Taylor winning probably, probably by decision. She's not yeah. like a massive power puncher. She's just like a real technical. Yeah, real technical. From what I've seen, like, like more of an accumulation. Great, stuff. great work rate. Great yeah. combat, like great combination. Great function. defense and shit too. Like, like she's fucking next level, man. I haven't watched much before the weekend, but yeah, I wish I caught more of her fights fucking earlier. That's for sure. Yeah, she's one of like the better like female boxers. If you mm. want to watch, like if you're yeah. watching it for the boxing aspect, like she's one to watch. Hundred yeah, percent. Very slick, man. Hundred Like I, I've always wished her and like. Clarissa Shields were like closer in weight. Oh. Then, like, then you could make like a mad catch weight fight. That would have been too much of a disparity. It's fucking like the gap's way too big. big. It's like 135 and 168. Yeah. Like that's like dream fight type shit. Yeah, that would have been next level. Uh, So we all, yeah, pretty much on the green side. Taylor's going to take the dub. Yeah, Taylor's going to yeah. get it done. Um, Katie. Oh, Katie. Uh, Jojo Diaz versus William Zapater, I believe. Versus but William. There's a Jose Zapater, but he fights at a higher weight class. I'm just going to call him William. Um, Jojo versus William. Jojo versus Big Willie. I mean, I see Jojo getting getting in close against Big Willie and just beating it up. I see him beating that Willie up, and I see him, I see him putting in that work. Beating down on that Willie with both hands. <laughs> I see him just putting in work. I see him, I see him beating it until it's red raw, to be fair, Ned. Um, I don't know. This is a better guy. I know Jojo Diaz. But I mean, yeah. Like we just mentioned before, like yeah, he's just a fucking scrappy. gay around for his money. Yeah, is that just like his fight style, kind of like scrappy inside yeah. fighting? Okay, cool. I think Zapata is a Mexican name, so uh, we might get a fucking bit of brawl here. Bit of a bit of a Mexican standoff, you reckon? Mm-hmm. There tends to be a bit of a gap in this lightweight division, in the sense of like you've got all of these like top contenders kind of thing, and I would say that like the the Diaz probably falls into like that top ten of like these top contenders, but then once you sort of hit a certain point, there's this massive drop off in talent. Yeah, and it's kind of like these, like these guys, like Zapata and that, like, like we were mentioning before with the Ortiz fight. Like, obviously, everyone's always got a puncher's chance in the ring, but yeah. it seems like these lower tiered guys are just constantly being fed to these little bit higher level of competition to sort of keep everybody in this circulation. Yeah, because as far as yeah. I know, he's quite highly ranked in the WBC. He might have even had some form of interim belt or lower belt when he fought Haney, I believe. Joey Dowes. Yeah. Uncle Joey. Uncle Joey. Um, stepping away from the podcasting game Joey to Joe. take a fight. Um, I, heard that it's, that's like it's, I heard that it's letting him weigh in as he please, like it's Joey Dowes. Do what you want. Imagine that. Just You're going to do YouTube boxing. Make it that. Make it like Joey Dowes just gets oh, to fuck flog it. He would the it. fucking press conference. Oh, the best, bro. What do you think? I'm not answering that question. Go fuck your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone can come down. Um, I mean, I feel like this is a weekend just kind of a tune-up fight, to be fair. It really is, yeah. Kind of a, well, except for like the Paul Silver thing. Everything is kind of like yeah. just a, yeah, like a midway a point. Way. Like, you know, yeah. like Loma's trying to work his way back into the belt side of things, which is obviously just going to be announced as soon as the fight's over. Um, Like I said, with me and Frumi, kind of at odds here as to whether Taylor's going to either retire or have another Serrano fight. But she is getting towards the end of her career. And I think like, even if she does do the Serrano fight, I think this is a bit of like a homecoming as in like, I'm doing my thing and then I'm fucking off. Yeah, right yeah, off for sure. Because she like she's given the done Irish enough, fans what they deserve. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, and like the reception that she's gonna get after winning that fucking blockbuster fight at New York. Not that she wasn't already gonna get one, but like coming off the win that she's had, going into a fucking packed stadium in Ireland. Oh, huge! They yeah, just for love sure. it too, bro. Mm-hmm. They like fucking love it. Well, because that's the thing. Like they're massive sport fans, and like we were talking about before we came in here of the whole like most of Ireland sort of turning on Conor McGregor because he's, you know, he just gives them a bad name kind of thing. Taylor's never said a fucking bad word in the media. She just goes out, does a fucking job, yeah, gets very, it done. Very quietly spoken. Exactly. Like just, yeah, I've seen, like, something of, like, models. how she's a role model for young women getting mm-hmm. into boxing. Yeah. And I think that's pretty fucking And, like, cool. yeah, like, I didn't even know that fact, but, like, through me just mentioned, literally the only reason we have women's boxing at the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. they use her as, like, a... As, like, the stepping stone sort of fucking for people to see what, like, women's boxers can do. Yeah. And they were like, okay, we will yeah. put that in the Olympics. Yeah, that's just, just crazy. But, yeah, this Jojo Diaz versus the Peter, it's probably, I'd say, like, probably the most competitive fight over the weekend. Yeah, I would yeah. actually say that, yeah. Because, like, I don't know, like, I was just saying, like, Taylor's got, like, that homecoming fight. And, like, you got Paul versus Silva, which is... Yeah, like you sort of don't know how that's gonna go, but it's it like just depends how not either of them come out. Yeah, yeah, and it's like not really like a boxing match. It doesn't have like it, it doesn't have any significance towards anything. No. Yeah, and then like Loma, as you said, you got him like going back, wanting to go back for the belts. So they're like keeping him busy so mm-hmm. they can make the fucking Haney fight next. Yep. I feel like that Jojo Diaz versus Peter is probably the most competitive one for the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Diaz probably should get the job done, mm-hmm. but yeah, I feel like it'll be the most competitive one that there is over the weekend. I mean, we're gonna fucking let the people know next week for what happens over the weekend. Uh, who wins? Ned next week, is it? Yeah, next week. Next week, Ned is away for the week, so it will be the Froom and the Griff coming in doing the podcast. Um, Rose Styles. Just fucking white news. White news. Just making it happen. So yeah, we'll bring you next week. We're going to be coming in with Loma Ortiz, Paul Silva, Taylor versus Carbonara, uh, Joey Diaz versus Zabita, and yeah, a usual fucking believe it or not, whatever else happens over the weekend. But that's um that's it for the breakdowns. Um, I feel like we're gonna roll into everyone favorite segment, boys. Um. Oh. What have we got this week? What have we got this week? I'm going to let Froom take it away here. Froom. This one? Froom, Froom, Froom. What have we got for the people this week? Take it away. Fuck Al Heyman. Wow. Um, <laughs> he looks straight in the camera. <laughs> yeah, fuck that dog. Fuck you, Al. Ruining um, another great fight. Well, I mean, I feel like we we skipped over this topic earlier. We kind of touched on the two fighters. Just so I can give the people a bit of an idea of what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We skipped over the two fighters, uh, Crawford and Spence. Uh, been in the works for a while now, just back and forth, back and forth. And I feel like Al Heyman here has just fucking done himself a mischief. Drop the ball, that's for sure. He's pissed you, off. Uh, pissed off the wrong people. Should we start there and work backwards, you reckon, for him? Oh, we can start wherever, wherever, wherever you want, Ned. We, let, seeing that this is the most pertinent information... Let's let's start there, and then you can just go where you want with it. Because no. you're the man with all the information here. So Al's just completely fucked us again. Just raw dogged us. With the Spence Crawford fight. Mm-hmm. So all Crawford wanted was to know what the man was getting fucking paid. Which is completely unreasonable. Like, completely as, reasonable. As yeah. we yeah. all do. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you're not going to go do a day's work and at the end of the day be like, oh, what were you, what were you paying me for that? You're yeah, gonna, you're gonna fucking figure out the fine details before you get there. Exactly. You're like you know, I want twenty five an hour or 
pile. You're not going to be like, at the end of the day, be like, oh, what are you, what are you joking me? I was going to give you six bucks for like an hour for the day. <laughs> so, all right. Like, it'd be the same thing. You don't want to go into a fight and just, you know, go fucking put your life on the line and then come out of it and be like, oh, what did I make for that? Oh, 20 grand. What did my opponent make? Oh, 20 million. Mm. And you're like, what? And so, if- fair, fair thing to ask for. Yeah, like, all he wanted to see was, like, the back end of the deal. So, like, whatever the fight made on the pay-per-view, like, they were offering him fucking 30% or some shit, and he was yeah. just like, yeah, whatever, I'll take it. Like, But they didn't want to show him the receipts. Of what the whole event made. Of what the event makes, so he knows he's not getting ripped off, and I think that that's where their standoff come into fucking issue. Mm. And then Al's just gone... Oh, you fuck off over there. We'll give Spence this guy because we really don't want him to fight you. Yep. And yeah, but that also leads back to everything else he's done, like the bullshit that's going on now with the WBC and the PBC yep. to get the heavyweight fucking championship into their little fucking circle. And then you got like if you go all the way back to four years ago now. Yep. You got everything that happened with AJ and Wilder. Like Wilder turning down, I think it was twelve and a half million the first time. They offered him, yeah, it was twelve and a half. Wilder and that turned around and called that slave wages. It's like four times what he'd earned in his career. Hey, yeah, it was like he was like net worth was like five million dollars at the time. Yeah, like he was saying that like that was for slave wages, and then they fucking. Eddie, like, goes back to him with, I think it was, like, 16 million or something, and they turn that down again and rob us of that fight. And then there was that dumbass $50 million offer that fucking Wilder put out there with absolutely no backing. And, like, there was that whole thing where the money was coming from Frank Warren and AJ can't fight on anything to do with Frank Warren because he signed to fucking Sky Sports. And there's just that whole big fiasco there. And then... They got Wilder to go sit down. I think it was Lou DiBella at that time because he was, like, one of the managers of Wilder. They sat down with DAZN to try and, like, come up with the was the fight for Brazil. I think Wilder was guaranteed, like, $20 million for that. And then it was two back-to-back fights with AJ. I think all up the deal was worth something like $120 million. Yeah. And they just turned it down. Yeah, right. They're like, nah, nah, we'll go over here and fight Fury. Um, bear with us for a second here. Um, sorry about that, tradies and gentlemen. Technical issue there. Uh, it's all good though, Franklin. There is um, no worry. It happens. It happens. Um, hundred and twenty million dollar deal. Yeah, they just turned down. They turned it down. They were just like, no bueno, no. Yeah, no. No part of. I mean. I mean, that only tells you, like, a couple of things. And then they took the Fury fight. Yeah. After yeah. Fury had been on the bags for however long, thinking, yeah. it, thinking it was an easy touch. That was when Fury first came back after, like, the whole depressive yeah. episode and shit. Okay, yeah, when he'd put on, like, 300 kilos. Yeah, so, like, that was going on while Fury wasn't even around. He did, didn't he? Or did he lose 300 kilos? He was, like, over 300 pounds. Like, that was closer, anyway. That 50 or something like that. Yeah, so that was going on while Fury wasn't around, and then like Fury come back, so I take Fury's like an easy pick, and end up getting fucked on anyway. Yeah. yeah, and then like we were all hanging around, hoping that we were going to get the Fury versus AJ fight, mm. and they had like a arbitration case going on for I can't even remember what the reason was now because I think it was because fucking Wilder thought Fury had fucking cheated or some fucking. There bullshit. was a rematch clause. In the contract. Oh, that's but right. Because Wilder didn't activate the rematch clause in time, it was technically like technically supposed to be null and void. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he's like activated that wanted that rematch clause and like while that's going on, AJ and Fury are like negotiating for the undisputed fight. And then like the day before I think Fury was all like, Oh yeah. Fucking we're gonna sign the thing tomorrow and then like Twelve hours later, it comes out that Wilder's won this case, and then he signs to fight with fucking Wilder again. Yeah, like it was just everything. It's just all got to do with the fucking PBC. Yeah, it's fuck. They just rip you off every time, and, and then like 
Al Heyman. He yeah. runs yeah. UFC. Related to Paul Heyman at all? Might as well be just both shifty. fucking knobs. I was going to say they sound... I was about to say, it's probably an adopted brother situation. Like yeah. Bruce and Mike Buffer. It seems like it. It seems like you're like, the more you explain this Al Heyman dude, like I'm just picturing Paul Heyman in my head. Like a little short, fat, fucking bald head, bit of ponytail somehow. Like how do you have well, a bald hair actually, and a ponytail? They kind of have that same kind of like rodent kind of features almost. But imagine... Imagine Paul Heyman in blackface with no ponytail, same bald spot, curly hair around the sides of his head, and way bigger, whiter teeth. Okay, that's Al. I mean, they could be related. Yeah, like it's, it's not. Another- it's not like it's not to a point where you're like, you know, yeah, no, nah, down the track, there's no relation. Nah, God no. I mean, but yeah, he just fucking and like like we've spoken about a million times before. He constantly puts on piss poor fucking events like. Yeah, what did we have on the weekend? We had Wilder Hellenius and you had Plantarell as a co-main kind of thing. That was still yeah. $74 in the States. That's not worth $74. No. Would it's you not say... worth it to see, like, Anthony Darrell, who's, like, nearly at the end of his career, Caleb Plant, who got pieced the fuck up by Canelo, he's got really nowhere else to go within the division, fighting each other, means nothing, and then you got Wilder fighting an ex-sparring partner who he knocks out in two and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, then you got, country, like... The whole circus with everything they do with fucking Javonta Davis that no, goes fuck on fucking pay per view. Like, it's. They give you absolutely nothing for a lot of fucking money. And they yeah, make yeah, it hard as fuck to access. Yeah. Even if they wanted money from other markets. Like, like we were saying before, you can't get shit like that on even KO. You have to fucking go to the pub and watch it if it's even on yeah. or know somebody with a Foxtel and pay for main event. Well, like, look how they plan their cards when the other weekend was that huge weekend. Like, they just had their card in the middle of a different card's main event. Yeah. Like, you finish Haney Cambosis and then you tune over and it's just like that fight's finishing. Like, the main Hellenius versus Yeah, fucking did they really Wada. think they were going to compete with, like, yeah, obviously, yeah. like. And they were both pay-per-view. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then you look at it in the sense of, like, everyone so. says, like, Oh, but Haney Cambosis shouldn't have been happening because Haney was so fucking convincing in the first fight. You're trying to tell me Wilder Hellenius is supposed to be convincing? I mean, yeah, well... What the fuck was I supposed to be Wilder, convinced about? No, Wilder Fury 3. Exactly. There's nothing to be convinced about there. Exactly. No, Yuri was going to fucking beat him. Like, and they still put all that shit on. It just shows what you're talking about because they're already talking about a fucking Wilder fucking Fury 4. Yeah. So it just yeah. shows that they're just like... You know, it's all just like... Everything they do is based on pay-per-views. No one's guaranteed money. Like, it's just shifty as fuck. The, yeah, like, their like whole that. setup, sort of. Like It's yeah. honestly going to be, like, if everything that I said at the top of the show comes to fruition, it's going to be better if they fucking fold as a company and all mm. of their fighters get split between Top Rank and DAZN. Yeah, because yeah. Bob Arum's probably got about, I don't know, 30 minutes left on this planet at any <laughs> given time. A strong wind could probably, like, you Knock know, just crush his fucking ribs and... And that guy's life. So you would very, no, no. like, you just hope that whoever is under him has a better relationship with people like Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya and shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Are you a rodent? Oscar De La Hoya looks like a bit of a rodent, no? Pretty much. Yeah. Like, he, just, he, looks like a, he just looks like a suspect, bro. Like, if I met him, I'd be like, what are you doing? He flies under the radar so much, but. No, he, not, not this radar, Eddie. I'm telling he you. He talks so much shit about the most like like it he's obviously just so butthurt that canelo left him kind of thing so he runs golden boy he runs golden boy who's on golden boy these days garcia that's really about it yeah pretty much so canelo pretty much made golden boy what it is well golden boy are like partners with the zone so any golden boy event happens through them yeah okay so it's like half half they have a couple of i don't think they're a promotion company per se yeah, they used to be like with um, I think they used to do a lot with like Showtime and shit yeah. before Showtime because they don't uh, actually promote any of their own shows. They are like they promote fighters, but they're not a show promoter. Okay. They don't do any of their own events. Yeah, this is so much shit. Um, but then it's like that with like stuck in the PBC as well. But Canelo to fight Caleb Plant, like they made Canelo leave the zone. Oh, okay, but like that fight. Yeah. And go over and fight Plant on, like, on the PBC. Yeah. But, like, didn't want to offer him, like, nearly half as much as what he was getting, like, what he was making with his own. Yeah. 
Like they're just like, they're <laughs> shady. Shit, yeah. Shady, yeah they? And then like they wanted to make it so like he could fight Charlo or whatever, but like that had to be part of that deal. And yeah, that's that was the whole fuck around with it because they like they needed it to be on their network, but they wouldn't give him just a one fight contract. The only shit that they would give him is like, oh, you're gonna fight Plan, but then you also have to fight Charlo on Showtime. Yeah, I gotcha. So yeah, just trying. Because Charlo wasn't even in the division at that point in time. That's so right up. And it's not the undisputed one, so he has no fucking right. Yeah, no. I mean, I feel like it's, we need to probably like a episode soon where we don't have a great deal on. Probably next we, couple of weeks, to be honest. We it's a might, bit of a lull. Yeah, we might dive into like boxing a bit. Um, just into like the fuckery of it all, what I guess. What commissions mean and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, different commissions, different promoters. We'll just try to kind of do like a bit of a dive in and then, you know, people that aren't big boxing fans or people like myself who are like kind of new to boxing get a bit of an idea of what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Because I've got a bit of an idea because I've just heard you talk about like these motherfuckers and, but like, yeah, coming in from fresh ears, I'd be like, mm-hmm. why the fuck are they talking about Paul Heyman <laughs> and Brock Lesnar going to boxing? <laughs> it's all the um, big shit show. Yeah, everything you boys have explained to me, like, it's hard to fucking keep up with. Like, at times, it's like, wait, so this guy's raw dog and this guy, so that means that guy's got to get raw dogged by that other guy. Like, it's just like, it's a raw dog show, really. Like, yeah. who, who can raw dog the hardest? That's like, oh, well, yeah, you get the fight. Like, that's what in my head. And then, like, you know, they like Eddie Hearns, just like professional raw dogger. So he just gets the raw dog and done. Gets the deal, then who gets the, the fight. Who is the shiftiest businessman? Yeah. It's literally not like who wants to fight who. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, yeah, boys, I got the fight on his own now. So in uh, in summary, fuck you, Al. Um, I mean... Dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're just bouncing from person to person that is just fucking letting the boys down. So you know what to do, people. Uh, if you want the boys in that position... Fucking, I don't know what they fucking do on all these fucking platforms that we're on, Nettie, but I know on Spotify you can download. On Apple, you can fucking like Apple Podcast. You can, you can, uh, so Spotify now has a rating system, so you can rate and subscribe on both of those platforms and any other streaming platform that we're a part of. Well, hit that shit up, do that. Uh, go to the YouTubes, which is, you know, we're just going to start posting a fuckload to the YouTubes. Um, See our beautiful faces. Once again, two YouTube exclusive videos on the weekend. Two. That's two. Yeah. That's one more than one. Two. Um, that Floyd, is more than one, Griff. Floyd, Jeff. <laughs> um, Floyd, you might want to get your mate to help you with that one. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, so then, oh, on YouTube. You did it right. <laughs> on YouTube, if what you like means? our video. How many that mean? <laughs> Is he flying? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Um, YouTube, you can if you like what we're doing, like the video. If you don't like what we're doing, dislike the video. We don't fucking care. It all helps. Comment, get involved. Comment, tell us we're fuckwits. It's fine. Do whatever you want. We're not gonna get offended. Um, Just if you like what we're doing, it. if you like what we're doing, get behind the boys. TikTok and Instagram at the Oakland Tornado Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah we're 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 on it all finally we're on the Facebooks uh well Froom's on the Facebook yeah like, that's it Froom's quite active me and Ned just have no part to do with it really um we're on the other the other platforms though um yeah you catch like, me in the comment section on YouTube giving you it to someone catch him in every comment Back section <laughs> on YouTube if you have a comment section it's not safe Back the Froom up if you see him in there fucking you know commenting on a fucking Jake Paul video get in there and fucking Get behind him. Tell him how he is. Get fucking behind him. Um, you know, we're at the end of an episode, lads. It was a fucking good one. Another good one. Fuck you. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, just do the best and just don't get your dick in a twist. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>